Welcome back to another edition of Come On Now, the podcast. We are back for episode 23. Goddamn. A lot, goddamn. And a few specials that we've done in, as well. Can you believe we are here? Yeah. Halfway through our first year? Goddamn. Like this, is, this, is, this is crazy. Before, you, before we jump in, if you haven't done so, please go subscribe and hit that bell. And also follow us on IG, Facebook, and TikTok. Come on now, pod podcast and an X. Come on now, pod. I am Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I am joined by Nick Taylor. Uh, we appreciate Wait, y'all. Oh, I, I'm playing. I'm trying to play this crap so it's make you look good, but it's not working. <laughs> oh, there we go. Former CFL veteran and three-time Grey Cup champion. Reintroduce yourself to our new viewers, Nick. Um, Rudy already just said one part of it. Um, former NFL player, also arena football player, D1 basketball player, self-proclaimed fastest man in the world. If you know, but didn't know about me then, you know about me now. Uh, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. We're getting more followers, more subscribers. Y'all are really starting to rock with us. Y'all like it. Rudy can't stop paying attention to his Yankees. They're playing right now. He's a big baseball fan. He loves it. Maybe we start diving into baseball a little bit more. Hmm. Yeah, we got to do that. Actually, my dumbass son, if you saw him in the, bo- the bottom left of the camera. You can't put call him, put him in, Ah, whatever. He, I just told him to stay down. And, of course, he's lifting his head up doing this type of nonsense. I don't know he, what he's doing. He's great in his team, Rudy. You yeah, raised him. You raised him. I, 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 you know raised him. I did a good job because the Yankees just tied him in the ninth inning against the oh. Orioles. It's five to five. So he's going to so, celebrate, Rudy. You, you're, you're a 1980 parent, 1970s, real tough, hard ass. <laughs> Sit your ass down, dumbass, dumbass, dumbass. That's and I'm and I'm watching this in the in the in the in the, in the picture a, frame in front of me in reverse. Yes. Oh, that's a pop up, goddamn it! But hey, we were down five one. Anyhow. I'm Rudy Rodriguez Shomai. I was actually Nick's travel team basketball coach. Um, gosh, seven, gosh, what year are we in? Uh, 16, 20, 17 years ago? Well, 20, eight, 18 20, years ago. 20 years ago. No, oh, 19. Uh, 19, 19 years ago. 19 years ago. Yeah, because Nick is getting old, man. He's like 35 now, man. My 36. God. 30, you, you just turned 36? Yes, sir. Baby. Oh, my. Oh, that's you, That was in March. Oh, my God, right? You wouldn't even know because I look so damn good. Well, people well, people have no people have no idea how old I am because they always think I'm like 35 years old. No, and I love them. No, but no. That's, everyone, everyone thinks that shit. Even, the, even, even when I was at your house and your little girlfriends were back in the day, spent, and I was, what, 43 at the time? 40, no, I was like 40 at the time, 41. It's another level. I was 30 to 35. So, one, hey, one, hey, one, one person that. is enough, but I'm. But that's not. I've been told this by many. I mean, you know, I do not look like I'm damn near 50. You're, you're definitely in the 40s. Uh, get the fuck out of here. Get easily, out of here. easily. Get the fuck. Out of here. You know, you, you you just lie to lie, man. So, I, so don't I, I, I get it. Man. No one has ever told me that I look like I'm 40. Okay. Nobody. Nobody. I, I and, told you that. You only you only know that. That's why you told me that. No, you're four. You look it. Come on, guy. I do not look forty five. I do not look forty six years old. Damn near forty seven. You must you be bugging. I've been bald for fucking a decade. I've been so, bald since I was twenty one. That automatically makes you look thirty eight. I mean, I looked old. I looked older when I was twenty four years old than I look now. You must be crazy. Jesus Christ. Oh, they, my God. See, 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 this is part of the Caitlin Clark hater community, community <laughs> but you're going to call it the Rudy hater community, where, you, you know, you like to make fun of me and, and call me a fat ass and say I'm retarded and, and call me all kinds of names in these posts because, I mean, hey, I, we, we were called clowns and don't know shit. Well, mind, you, mind you, while the person is spelling the word great, G-R-A-T-E. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's a little hard to take people seriously when they can't spell basically. You know, Third you know, reader words. The one that gets me is clown. I, I don't like that one. I, that one, I can take anything else. Clown kind of stirs me the wrong way and makes me want to jump through the mother freaking why am, I a cl- why am I? Why are we a clown? Why are we clowns? Because we disagree with you? Like, uh, it's simple. Like, come on. 
Yankees game is going to extra innings, by the way. God damn it. All right. All right. Let's roll. All right. So let's just jump in. I'm jumping right into it. We can call this another edition of Rudy's Rants right now because I'm going to fucking go off on this one. It's all things Caitlin Clark. On Sunday, we had a chance to watch the second edition of Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese, the Indiana Fever versus the Chicago Sky. And what will people do? Will the, what will the female uh, media personalities do? They will complain that we're talking about the topic. For fuck's sake, you had no one talking about your shit turned sport for the last 17 to 20 years. And now you got 2.3 million viewers on a 12 noon game on Father's Day. So what was fans doing? Fathers were watching a women's basketball game at 12 noon while they were being served eggs and bacon and breakfast in bed. First and you're foremost, complaining about it. Give me your thoughts. First and foremost, why does the WNBA have a, a, a highlight top game like this? Well, I mean, not the record-wise, but you have two phenomenal, I mean, two, two superstars in the league. They're considered superstars. Yeah, Angel Reese is a considered a superstar in the league because of off the court man. Even her baby Bengals is a rookie. Kyrie Irving ain't a superstar. We call him Angel Reese. Come on, man. Her Come brand, on now. Her brand, her brand brings her superstardom. Yes, I mean let's 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 put it there. Everybody, people come to watch her also, not just Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is top notch. She's one A. Angel Reese is a B. Rest of the league, C's and D's, F's. When it comes to viewership, um, so why is this game at twelve o'clock? <laughs> why twelve o'clock Eastern time? <laughs> Mind you, that on the West Coast, that's nine o'clock. Who the hell is waking up to watch that game? Obviously, I got some viewers, but WNBA. Why is that not a prime time game? Take advantage of, of of what you got. I'm tired of this, man. Who's marketing this league, man? Who's doing it? Who's doing it? I need names. I need numbers. I need the calling. I need to speak to these people. Who's marketing this league? Because they're doing a terrible goddamn job. Besides, the only thing that they did good was made um, Caitlin Clark. All her games are damn near televised. Besides that, what's the marketing team doing? And they, and they playing her the most games to start the season. It's the, bl- it's the blind leading the blind, man. And then, and then, and, and then the women in this league are calling us, oh, yeah, they're, they're all these new fans in, like, quotation marks, like, all these new fans are joining in to watch it and talking. That's what y'all left me. You finally got it. You arrived. Cool hell, yes, we are new fans because the shit was boring. It was terrible. There's nothing that intrigued us. Y'all finally got us. Yes, we are new fans. Yes, we didn't know this happened before. Yes, we didn't know that the league is this physical. Yes, we didn't know this and that about this player. No, we didn't know. We didn't know. We're here now, so show us what you got. Put your best foot forward so we can continue to be fans, and now we can get the knowledge and gain the, you know, the exposure that y'all get. We can learn about each player and see why we should continue watching this player or liking this player or hating this player or loving this league or hating this league. We're watching now. Yeah, we're newbies, man. Make us keep watching. But y'all keep talking about us like y'all want us to go away. You can't want us to leave. We can leave. We can leave. We don't have we were there before. We can go right back to where we were and that could go right back to crying again about people are not giving y'all what I do and then y'all gonna be upset again and y'all are not gonna get paid like y'all should get paid or we should have been getting paid, but y'all have been red this whole time and that's what we're complaining about. Well yeah, we're here, we're new, yes. But going in forward, um the game was a, it was a good game, man. It was um it was fun to watch. It was I had to go back and watch it, you know, because it was at twelve damn clock. I didn't know we had the damn game in the, 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 the first place. Rudy told me at three o'clock. Hey, the game just finished. Who played? And the Lisa came. God oh, damn! I wish I would have knew. Um, so maybe that's on me. Maybe I should be paying attention or having on my 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 phone was Caitlin Clark is about to play, so I could go and tune in. But the game was good. Caitlin Clark outclassed, outdueled. Angel Reese once again. She did it again. She did it early in the season. She did it last in the NCAA um, Elite Eight. And she did it again. Um, she's starting to find her groove. It looked like it. She's making shots again. She's um, they're running a little bit more offense for her. They, they got her coming off 
a little bit different screens, different actions, trying to get him more involved. And Alia Boston um, has been playing well. She's finally starting to step up. She's starting to do all the things that Ruiz has been cussing her about. And I thought that she was a big old slug moving in now because she wasn't moving very well. And she was missing point blank laps. She still made missing laps, but she got a little down to make it back this time. Um, but she's been dynamic. She's been over 50, 60%. 70%, 80% the past couple games. Um, so she's getting it rolling. Um, what's the other girl? Mitchell, she's been hitting threes. Um, and the, the, the head of the snake is Caitlin Clark. She gets everybody going, whether it's passing, whether it's her jump shooting, or her getting a couple steals. Because she's been playing the defense, but somehow she gets her hands on a couple of balls. Um, um, but all in all, it's, um, it's good to watch. It's fun to watch. I love the game. Um, and then, obviously, I guess we're going to talk about it after in well, a little you're, bit. You're, you're lying when you say you love the game. That's a lie. Um, no, I'm talking about the game between them. I'm talking about when, uh, when, okay. those, when those two teams play, when those two go out, it's, it's fun to watch because of the rivalry. It is a rivalry. I don't care if they don't play the same position. It's a rivalry. Whether it's because of the race, you know, black versus white, um, or Angel Reese playing a villain to Caitlin Clark, you know, all the fans that love her. And, 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 and want to see her do great, and, and you know, and the the vitriol between you know the fans. It, it, there is vitriol between the fans. That was the same way between Magic and Bird, and they may not be Magic and Bird, but they are getting people into the game. Magic and Bird did it. Um, so kudos to those two young ladies for doing that. Um, I guess we're gonna go into Angelie's foul eventually. Um, well, but, be, before I go into their fucking Yankees, find a way to bring you here, and then bring you here. Two, run, two runs immediately in the freaking top of the 10th. And, throw. I mean, errors. Oh, here comes another one. Oh, my God. Fucking blow the game now after all that shit put me through this. Anyhow, um, the, the fa- look, the game itself, both teams are bad. Okay? Neither of those teams is any good. The, the sky suck. The, the fever, by and large, are not very good. They have finally started winning in large part because Aaliyah Boston – started to finally play like a first pick of the draft. And their schedule, their schedule is getting softer. Yeah, the schedule is getting softer, but even with us, even, what's the, what's the term? Even, uh, even the sun shines on a dog's oh, ass once in a day, like once, once in a while, like something like that, you know, because the Chicago sky beat the New York Liberty yeah. earlier this year. Earlier. Like, mm-hmm. But but the fever have gotten absolutely annihilated by all the good teams they've played. They've now they 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 played tonight again against the Washington Mystics and won that game. Uh, Leah Boston had twenty two. Mitchell had Mitchell couldn't miss tonight. She's typically a thirty five percent shooter. Um, she had twenty two, but she's also never seen a shot she doesn't like. Like that that girl, my God, she takes more shots than Clark. Yet Clark gets criticized for taking too many shots. She's only taking twelve and a half shots a game. Um, Boston played very well tonight. Caitlin Clark had 18, 12, and 6, and 4 steals. 6 assists, 12 rebounds. She's a 6-foot guard. Let's remember that. She's a 6-foot guard with 12 rebounds, 18 points. Watching that game tonight, watching the game versus um, the Sky was the same thing. They don't run enough actions for this woman. When they run actions for her, she's going to knock down the shot. She gets people open just by being on the floor. Kelsey Mitchell does not take a does not take a contested three. Every shot Kelsey Mitchell takes is pretty much open. Every shot every woman on that team pretty much takes outside of twelve feet is pretty much open. I watched the Mercury last night against. You know, I'm trying to watch more so people can't say I'm not watching this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I watched the Phoenix Mercury last night versus the Liberty. The Liberty they beat the Liberty by six. It was ninety nine ninety three. Apparently, they combined for the most three-pointers in WNBA history, which is 33. Imagine that. They combined for as many three-pointers as the Boston Celtics typically hit in a game. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, obviously a little bit more than that. But they combined for 33 made three-point shots, which is a WNBA record. And I'm watching Diana Taurasi. I think she had 19 points or something like that. Every shot she took was rather wide open. They're not guarding her. And that's the difference. And people are going to sit here and make comments and criticisms of, of, of Clark and say she pushes off when she shoots. Like, have you watched James Harden play? Have you watched any, any, have you watched any, any NBA player? Wait, have you any, watched any WNBA player? They any, all, good, any good player pushes off. They find out how to do it without a good call. As long as you do it like this, with your arm like that, 
Yeah. You're fine. Yeah. If you do this, then you probably will get called for an offensive foul. Yeah. So when when I'm I mean, it was a comment on ours. She's oh she pushes off on every play. I guess that's how she scored four thousand points in college. And that's how she scored two hundred points in the WNBA faster than anybody. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But, how can she but, do that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. How can she do that and move players if she's not physical? She's not physical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's not physical. <laughs> She's not oh, physical enough. She's yeah, not, she's not physical enough to play against the other mm-hmm. teams and and, uh, and across the in the across in, in Olympics, but she's pushing off everybody to score. Uh, like I mean, I, I can give you a I can give you a videotape of the most famous push off in NBA history. It won a, it won Game Six of the NBA Finals in 1998. You know who did it? Michael Jordan did it, and it was the most blatantly obvious push off in NBA history. And it won, and it won the finals. He took his hand and put it on by Ryan Russell's butt and took him right out the play. Do, like that's a push off. Did you did you did you hear what Andrea Carter said? I I, oh. I don't want I don't even want to hear that 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 clown anymore. You know what clown? She's a clown. I don't want to hear her clown voice anymore because she's absolutely retarded. Go ahead. So she she went on and she was like, she kept going off and on and on and on about this is the. Physical league, the WNBA is no, it's not. They're clumsy. No, she said it's very physical. It's very physical, very physical. And, and that we have physical. to understand that, that foul was, that foul was, it was a basketball play. It's just because no, it wasn't. It's a physical, it's a physical no, game. It's no, a physical no, game. It's a physical game. But if it's so physical in the WNBA, because you're making it seem like it's more physical than anything else, doesn't that go against what you just said that Caitlin Clark can't play in the Olympics because it's physical? Are they preparing WNBA to be physical? If, if they're not, if you keep, you're the one that's telling us that it's a physical game and we don't understand how physical it is in the WNBA, the W, then shouldn't she be okay to, the W, shouldn't she be okay to handle it in the Olympics? They can't be more physical than, than the women in the WNBA because you just made it seem like it's the most physical league ever. So you got to prepare her to, to, to withstand that when she plays in the Olympics if she was to be called on that team. So that shouldn't be no damn reason that she shouldn't be on the team. So I'm, y'all, are making, y'all are making things okay for when y'all want it to be okay, but when y'all don't want it to be okay, y'all use it against her. So y'all got to make up your mind. Pick one. Is she physical enough or she isn't? Is she pushing off too much or she's not? Because y'all, y'all, y'all can't have it both ways with this, with this conversation. So I have to pick one side and roll with it. Right now, y'all are playing both sides just to make y'all point of y'all conversation work for y'all. It, it, so yeah, to that to that point, if it's a physical league, then pushing off is normal. Pushing off is normal, right? It should be normal because it's normal in the NBA that you see shooters constantly use their arms for separation. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jimmy Butler notoriously does it on almost yeah. every jump shot he takes. He's a shoulder. Player- Yes. He shoulders them out. Yeah. That's a, that, that, I mean, in theory, that should be an offensive foul, in my opinion, because guys literally fall on the ground from that Um, because he's strong as hell. So as long as you it, don't it, extend the hand, you're good. Yeah. And, and but the fact is, is that, no, she doesn't push off in every play because she's taking 30 fucking foot three point shots. That's she ain't pushing nobody to shoot that shit. She's stepping back, clown <laughs> people. And, and, and Drea Carter doesn't have to speak anymore. Every time Drea Carter speaks, it's like it's like listening to um the regurgitate. Uh, vomited soup or something like that. She says nothing. She says nothing. And yet they keep bringing her on first take in ESPN and, and trying to prop her up as some fucking expert in basketball. It's painful. She's been at ESPN for two fucking years. Her entire career has been based on Caitlin Clark's success. And I said it before, and I'll say it again. But watch that goddamn game, and I'm watching, for example, the foul with Angel Reese. In theory, was it a basketball play? Yes. Sure. Yes, it was. It was you want to know what? It was a reckless one. Because she had no shot and should have blocked in that shot. Because she doesn't have the ability to jump that damn high. And secondly, she never even touched her arm. So you, you're you flailing your arm across. And you cropped her across the face. And look, it happens. I get it. But then they're debating if this is a flagrant foul. No. It's they're a, deb- it's they, deba- Nick, they debated it. It took like seven minutes to no, make the decision. If that happens in the NBA, there's no conversation it's about this. A flag it's an flag. automatic flagrant. I've seen that called 500 times in the NBA. It's not a discussion. It's okay, okay, boom. It's reckless, whatever. Yeah, it was you, reckless. It was you, reckless. Once you wind up and you hit somebody in the head like that, 
it's that one where you you just try to you try to catch the ball early and, and most times you miss it. You so don't and then you catch the person in red because first of all you're not athletic enough to jump up there and get it. So you have to just do that little swipe. And when she swipe as hard as she did it, you hit her neck. That's a flavor. Bro, her hand didn't get near her arm. Yeah. Like it didn't it didn't get near her arm. It was right. Re- it was reckless. Because on top, of, on top of that, the shot got blocked. Right? Yeah. So. By her teammate, who's six seven down there. Yeah. So like you, you sit in there and, and and you make that play, and then in the post game, like don't sit here and say you don't want to be the villain. You want to be the villain. You're begging to be the villain because in post game, Angel Reese is interviewed and says it's a basketball play. Okay, it's a basketball play, but you goddamn well know that basketball play is a flagrant foul. Yeah, it's yeah. not even a discussion. And then she's yeah. blaming officials. My God, she and Luka Doncic are going to date and discuss how they blame officials for, for everything that goes wrong in their lives. Because I sure as shit remember a couple of weeks back when she got hit across the chest and it went up to her throat because she was in the air and off balance. Because that's typically what happens in women's basketball. They are always off balance. There's a lack of coordination and lack of athleticism that exists in women's basketball that does not exist amongst men. That's why they're always falling. Nick, I covered high school women's basketball, women, high school girls' basketball for a long time. And all you would see, falling on the ground, falling on the ground, falling on the ground. I covered college basketball. Same shit. It's, it, it, it doesn't stop. They're just not as athletic and coordinated as men are. It is what it is. It's genetics. I'm, I'm, it, but that's what makes the game look more physical than it truly is because they're falling so much. Cameron Bridges tore her ACL, not touching anyone while driving to the rim. She lost her balance. Anybody? No, but she lost. It wasn't. No, we. we you know, it, on a cut. No, on a cut. cut. No, 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 no. No, listen. When I say when I say it, uh, I a cut, no, it's non-contact. But when you do it in football, it's typically you're cutting, right? Yeah. Non-contact. She's driving. But she's so uncoordinated and unathletic that the way she literally had her legs almost to a split. Go watch the play. You didn't see it. No, I've seen it. She damn near did a split and then somehow managed to step on the other girl's foot while never being touched by the other girl. Now, that is an example to me. Yes, I understand non-contact injuries. They happen. But the way that one happened specifically, that's just a lack of coordination. Because she was literally falling over herself. And just off balance, as soon as she she drove, as soon as she tried to drive the ball. But I'm watching this crap, and then I'm listening to Angel Reese say, "Oh, and Caitlin Clark gets special whistles." Yeah, yeah. Angel, have you been watching the freaking I, officiating I, of Caitlin Clark? Yeah. Are you serious? Your teammate Biden checked her. I mean, out of bounds play where the ball wasn't even handed to Aaliyah Boston yet or Justin. She's a flagrant. It was not called a flagrant. Yeah, no. I think they yeah. called it a technical foul. They called it after a flagrant. After, after, well, they called it a flagrant. They called it a flagrant the next day. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to keep those for that. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Free throws don't come in the next day. That's, that's <laughs> complete nonsense. So you're, you're, looking, you're making statements that are, I mean, levels of blasphemy because you're lying. You're lying because the woman that hit you got ejected. Yes. So that's got a- ejected. And on top of that, she shouldn't have been ejected. Because to me, that was basic boxing out. You went around her, she stuck her arm out, and because you're jumping in the air, it hits you in a certain way that makes you fall down. Yeah. I the fall down made it an ejection. When the reality was the foul itself, she didn't clothesline her. She didn't do realistically. Angel Reese took her arm from way the fuck back here and went woof all the way through. Alyssa Thomas is in front of Reese. She throws her arm backward. That is not even remotely close to the contact level of the one that Reese put on fucking Clark. And Clark gets a flagrant that's debatable in people's minds. But Alyssa Thomas gets tossed from the game. And I'll go into this bullshit now. Cheryl swoops. With the the, the the reckless commentary that she constantly makes. Look, I've admitted when huh? she she just doesn't like Caitlin Clark. She doesn't. We we we. It's like if you just don't like her, just say you don't like her. Stop saying you like her. Stop trying to include other rookies. Kate Let's Martin. Be real. Like, Kate Martin. Kate Martin. I just Kate Martin. I was watching the Aces because of Kate Martin. 
Man, I was, I was flat Kate Martin girl. Remember, I said she was gonna make the team. Who does that know? She's not gonna make I, I was wrong. I was wrong. I said she's a perfect group person that I've been in a league for about 10 years because she's gonna do everything that you that you need her to do. She's not gonna make any mistakes. She's gonna come in the game. She's gonna do everything coach asks her to do. She's not gonna have to about hustling. She's gonna do all the little things. She's gonna step up. She's gonna take a charge. She's gonna knock down three, even though she's shooting at like 30. Something like that. I don't know what you're I'm sure they're all wide open shots. Yeah, she's open. Of course, she's open. She's open. She played with Angel Wilson. Playing with the beast that's, that's playing the league. Yeah, yeah, so she played with Angel Wilson, but she brought up Kate Martin. Yeah, and all these other Which, players. Rakea Jackson out of the out for the spark. No one's turning on the television to watch Cameron Brink and Rakea Jackson. I'm oh, sorry. I, I, I'm Jim. sorry. Well, they are two beautiful women. I'll give you that. No so, one's watching them for basketball, and no and no one's going to their games. So that, that no happened. one's going to their no one's going to their games. That, that, I'm they're about playing. That. They're playing in an empty building, Nick. No, 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 but that still don't make up stuff. She's <laughs> making up shit, course, not you. Of course, of course. So, Cheryl uh, Soup's making up shit because she's trying to diminish and discredit Caitlin Clark. She yeah. said on Gil's Arena, and I'm gonna play the video for a second. So take a look at what she had to say. Now that you've seen that, she says that. <laughs> she says that, first off, she says that I didn't. What I didn't play. She said that if she had to make a decision on Rookie of the Year, she had a vote. If she voted today, she would vote for Angel Reese's Rookie of the Year. Well, give me um, what would make you vote for someone as Rookie of the Year? I don't know production. Okay, so Angel Reese, yes, is averaging a double double right now. She's averaging pretty much the exact same amount of offensive rebounds as defense rebounds. No, more, more offensive no, no, it's it's gone, it's gone, it's, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone down, it's gone down. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna be accurate. I'm gonna be fair because last week it was like double offensive yeah. boards, the defensive yeah. boards, six to four. Yeah, and and this and and then she had that really good, uh, you know, she had that game where she went eight for ten. So she couldn't get so, too much. so she couldn't she couldn't grab her own boards. But there was a game before that where she missed nine layups and and grabbed five offensive boards of her own shot. So. If you're going to sit here and look at the actual data, look at it from a perspective of reality, okay? The reality of what happens. That's why when people talk about games, they're not actually watching the games. I watched Caitlin Clark tonight. What happened? Six more turnovers. Six more turnovers. Three of them, her teammate dropped the pass. They hit him in both hands. And what happens? It's a turnover for Caitlin Clark. Yeah. That's a turnover for Clark because they dropped pass. And she's and a because, She's a risk taker. And she takes risks. She tries right. to thread the needle, and right. they're not used to the needle being thread, and they're like shocked that the ball's in their hands. She just, they drop she, it. She 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 passes like Steve Nash. Remember when Steve Nash was yeah. you know, yeah. those yeah. turnovers, but he turned like he controlled the brother because he understood the game and mm -hmm. the differently. And they also got their teammates a little later on too. Yeah. You know. But like you, she could she could you know complete these passes. Like on football, she can actually connect on these passes to Purdue teammates, but the, the WNBA players can't catch the pass. Iowa, but yet they're so. They're, they're, Iowa, they're, Iowa, they're, Iowa, Purdue, I said Purdue, Iowa. So, uh, so Iowa, yeah, same thing. Um, but yet you're going to sit here and tell me that the that the WNBA players who are so talented, immensely talented, can't catch these passes. Yeah, there's a problem there. So I'm watching that game. So those turnovers that we constantly harp on, she's getting turnovers because her teammates can't catch. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of them. She's responsible for some. She's not responsible for all of them. Now, when I when but but it, but then when you look at Reese's numbers, Reese averages four point six offensive boards to five point six defensive boards. I've I've looked at play sheets. She's catching her own shots. Yes. So her rebound numbers are fluffed the hell up. Yes. And you say, oh, she's at a double double. Let me let me <laughs> give you some more numbers because people don't like data when they like to talk about data. When they want to talk about things, they want to mention turnovers for one person. But you know what? Caitlin Clark shoots from two point range. She shoots forty eight point five percent from two point range. You know what? Angel Reese shoots from two point range. Thirty eight percent. She six three plays power forward, and she can't make layups. She's overall shooting thirty seven point one percent from the field. Mm. All right, whereas Caitlin Clark shooting over thirty eight percent. Again, Caitlin Clark shooting jump shots. Yep. Not layups. Efficiency numbers. Scoring efficiency, Caitlin Clark. I don't really know what this number means. I'm being completely transparent, but I know that I read it on ESPN, so I wanted to use it. 1.287 for scoring efficiency. Uh, Clark is 1.287. For Reese, it's 1.121. Now consider the fact that Reese is taking layups again. 
Uh, shooting efficiency. Reese is 0 0.37. Clark is 0 0.49. Um, so those are efficiency numbers in scoring. Clark also is in the top 20 in rebounding as a guard. She's number four in the league in assists. If the, if the season ended today, she'd be the all-time record holder for most assists in the season by a player at Indiana. She's And she finished in the top five in the league in assists. She leads yep. her team in assists. She yep. leads her team in steals. She leads her team in scoring. Yep. It's fourth in rebounding. She takes the second most shots on the team, not the first. Kelsey Mitchell takes more shots than she does. They don't run plays for Caitlin Clark. When they do, she's wide open and she hits the shot. But when they guard her, they're guarding her 35 to 40 feet from the rim. Nick, I Ooh. swear to God, they are face guarding her when she doesn't have the ball 35 feet from the fucking rim. And they're going to sit here and tell you that they don't guard her differently? <laughs> So you have to run plays for her. You have to run actions for her off of screens. Yeah. And the screens they set in the WNBA are awful. A little buster should be having. They have, that, oh, my. Why, no, I'm just going to break it down. How wide she is. Those, when, she, when Kayla come off her screens, wide open. this should be wide open. Unless, she gets, not. unless she's getting half of her hands or doubles. Then oh. Man, a little buster screen should be. Oh, and They're not. But they're horrible. Size, man. Look how large she is, man. She's a awful. Remember, I had Boozer. It was a different time, though. When I played basketball, I was like that. So no. I didn't get to use them like that. When I played basketball with Boozer in the, in, at the park or whatever, or we don't play outside. We were playing at like Fitness or LA Fitness. Man, he's a monster to get around. He clears everything out. I'm telling you, he's he's four, he's four, four, Now he's 400 pounds. So it's, it's so much harder to get around somebody who's that wide like that. As long as I'm setting up a draw how I should be and making it so, be real wide with the screen, this should be, man, this should be the amazing one two combination. And it seems like they're starting to find it a little bit later. So I'm not going to be. You know, hard one is as bad as no, you No, they're doing a little. They're doing it a little bit better, which yes. is why Aaliyah Boston has it's now had one, has now had twenty seven, nineteen, and twenty two in the last three games. They won all three games. If you set those screens, like, if you set those screens, she's, she's, getting, she's getting those passes, bounce passes right to her. She's making the lay. I mean, she did miss a few today that would have mad Caitlin Clark potentially having a triple double. Um, then I watched the game. So I'm, yeah. I'm watching the missed layups. It, they're, they're, they're painful. Like, it, it, it's painful. And they still shot 50% as a team today. Kelsey Mitchell went crazy. Today. She was 8 for 11. Okay. Boston was 8 for 11. But, I mean, typically Mitchell is a 35% shooter from the field. And she's never yeah. seen a shot she doesn't like. So, and it gets, so you watch them, and they don't run enough actions for Clark. But there's just her mere presence on the floor. Yep. Kelsey Mitchell's always open. Boston's always open. The other girl Smith, who, who who you know is always open, they're always open. They're okay. never covered. Her okay. impact is just being on the floor. So it, 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 is it going to get better? Yeah, they're six and ten now. Right now, they make the playoffs. Yeah. Ask me, ask me, ask us what would happen if if the, if the Indiana Fever failed to make the playoffs. Oh, she's going to get. They failed to, if they failed to make the playoffs, nobody would watch the playoffs. Oh, and, I mean, and, and that's all about Caitlin. And, and then they'll say she wasn't good enough. But the reality is, you know who also isn't going to make the playoffs? The Chicago Sky are not going to make the playoffs. They're mm -hmm. not good. <laughs> well, they're not good. And you know who's also right now the number seven seed? Vegas. Yeah, this is, this is, yeah. Sorry, Vegas, the Aces. Yeah. They're the seven seed right now. While, while, while the Fever have played 16 games and the Aces have played 12. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why this team is, is probably tired. They've played more games still than anyone in the league. Only for today. <laughs> Not tomorrow. Be and, and, well, there'll be one more team that has 16, but by Sunday, they'll have 18. Today's Wednesday, yeah. right? Today's yeah. Wednesday. They play Friday and Sunday. They'll be at 18. They play, they play Chicago on Sunday again. Yeah. So another, yeah. another matchup with the, with, the, with the Chicago Sky. This time, it'll be on the road. But, yeah. you know, it, it, it is – but listening to Angel Reese say these things and saying that she's getting these whistles, like, yeah. what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. And listening to Cheryl Swoops with her, her dribble – I almost think that Gill brings them, brings her on there for a shock value because you can't take her seriously. At time, even Kenya Martin had to go on there. Even Kmart was on there to, saying there were guys, and, and this goes back to she makes a statement that people said 
they should not play hard against her. No, no one no, ever, no, no, no one's no, ever no. said they should not play hard against uh, Caitlin Clark. No, no one has ever no, said that. Nobody said that. What we have said very clearly is that they play her differently. That yeah. they play her, they're, they're, they're hitting her with far more double teams than anyone in the league, and that's statistically proven. They're, they're trapping her. They're yeah. doing everything they can to not have her get the ball because they're afraid of her shooting. And yeah. she searches for shots because her coach doesn't right, draw, draw plays to get her open. There are times where I think Caitlin Clark is passing up on wide open shots that she should take because she's trying so hard to get other people to ball. And she's more selfish. And she is. I you know, told, you should be more selfish at times. Yeah, she should be sure. She can't, she, can't, she can't pass up a wide open 16 footer ever. She, she has to be shooting 17 shots a game, but she has. But she's the point guard. She, if she was averaging 17, she'd be averaging 25 a game. She's but because a, she's taking 12 and a half, she's averaging 16 point something a game. She's a point guard, and she's a real, you know, you know, she don't do that hoorah stuff. So, you know, she ain't going to come in here like, motherfuckers, this my fucking team. I'm going to shoot this motherfucker. She ain't going to do that. She's going to try to get everybody happy and everybody the ball. She but, shouldn't but, be getting much shots up. But Kmart made a point to say, when I was the first-round pick and when I got drafted, there were guys that I know played me way harder yeah. than they played the game before. Yeah. And I even saw I said, man, you didn't play this hard last game. Yeah. So I don't expect people to not play her hard. They're playing her harder than anybody. Yeah. Because they're afraid of getting they're afraid of getting embarrassed by her. Because when you watch these games, I'm watching threes being shot wide open by everybody else. And when Clark takes a three, it's from 28 feet out. She's never toeing the line. No. She's never close to the line. When she comes off of a screen, when the, when the rare times she gets them, the Billy hedges up immediately because there's no if, if they head if they go back, she'll shoot it without they a foul. They don't play like LSU played them. No, no, they're not gonna <laughs> drop on her. Like they're, she's gonna drill that shit right in her goddamn face if they if they back up off her. But she's never taken a 22 foot six inch three point shot. She's taking them shits from 28 feet out. I watch air balls from 23 feet from these women. Like, air balls. You know, so she's, she makes this comment. And then, I mean, Swoops just, just admit, I don't like Caitlin Clark. Yeah, no it, problem just that. say it. No just problem. say it. No problem. Because, because it's, it's, it's like when you mention other rookies, no one cares about these other rookies. No. There's two rookies that they care about yes. primarily. Yes. Caitlin is one, and Angel Reese is a distant second. Because we prove that. Not we, but it was proven in Washington when the Mystics played both teams back to back nights or within two nights of each other. Mm. And Angel Reese, who's from Baltimore, drew 10,000. Yep. And then Aunt Caitlin Clark, who's not from Baltimore, drew <laughs> 20,333, the largest crowd in 20 years in the WNBA. Yep. A lot. I, I mean, that is a proven fact. Yes. But data, data sucks, and people don't like it. And then Swoops goes on, and at one point, Gil, Gil, Gil says, "You know, they're, they're, um, you know, one's a bully. You know, Angel Reese is a plays like a bully, right? Yeah, she does. And she does play like a bully. That's her style. That's her mother. That's her That's how she but, does. But, Zach but, Randolph. Zach Randolph. Zach Randolph. Zach Randolph. Hey, how she tries to flip it and says, Angel's not a bully. The real bully, she, is. The real bully is Caitlin Clark because she pushes off on every shot she takes. Did you, Nick, Nick, I swear to God, when, when we get done with this, and I may just do this for shits and giggles to over to play Cheryl Swoops' national championship game in 1990, whatever the fuck year it was, 94. Or whatever year it was when she went for when she went for forty seven in the national championship, Nick. When I tell you, look at the dribbling first. It's just like this. Mm -hmm. Look at the women and how no defense is played whatsoever on Cheryl Swoops. Like they're literally backing away. Mm -hmm. She scored forty seven points against air. She didn't have five shots contested the entire game. She's getting layups, wide open shots, every shot. Like it looked like it looked like Bob Cousy out there. It looked like them 1960s men's games that you people criticize 
where no one really is on anyone trying to really defend somebody. So Cheryl Swoops was a phenomenal athlete and a phenomenal player, levels better than all these women out there. Yep. And and and, and, it, and it showed, but there was no double. They didn't double team her. They didn't double her. Are you? I, I'm telling you, you Google it, you look it up. It is it is comedy because they make that game sound like Kobe going for 81. Yep. They yep. make it sound like Booker going for 70. They they make it sound like Dane going for 70. It, it, no one's guarding these women. She's not being double teamed by anyone. And if you remember the game, she scored more than half their points in that game. But you're sitting here and you're talking about how people play defense. Yep. They weren't even playing you in the national championship game. They were right. backing off of you. You're getting easy buckets the whole damn game. Yep. And you're the best player in the in the country that year. Like, yeah. like, give me a damn break. But sitting here calling this woman a bully because she pushes off. <laughs> Like, like you can't be like that's when it goes to the point where like you can't be serious, man. That's crazy, and this, is, and this is why Steph Curry's a bully. Clearly, <laughs> because and this is why fans of Angel Reese or anyone anti Caitlin Clark will jump on that commentary and say, "Well, see, I told you," because Cheryl Swoop said it. She must be right. She, I had someone say, Cheryl Swoopstone is more basketball than you. No, the fuck she doesn't. <laughs> no, she doesn't. No, no. Just because she played women's right. basketball, she knows mm. more basketball. I coached basketball. I coached Nick. Nick played Division I basketball. I coached another 20 guys that played Division I basketball. I coached guys that are playing professionally. I'm not going to sit here and call myself John Calipari. No. <laughs> but I know basketball, even if I can't jump two inches off the ground. Yeah. I don't need to have jumped off the ground to, to know basketball. And so when she met, like people met, because she played. Oh, well, okay. And if I gave her, and I, and if I gave her a history lesson on, on, on the rules of basketball, she failed. By the way, I did verify what I told you yesterday or on Monday. The gather dribble was actually written in in 2019. 2019. Correct. 2019. It was actually. It was detailed in writing in the rule book in 2019. So what, there was conversation what, about it in 09. Okay. So it did not exist. Huh? Because when you did, what was that called? When you didn't get Washington? Traveling. It was, they called it a traveling dribble. Man. I don't know what it was called, but I mean, it, it was traveling. Dribble, they made some other name for it, but they call it, but it was the, the gather step, the gather step, whatever you call it. It was not actually written into the playbook, into the rule book until 2019 in the NBA. I looked it up because I wanted to verify because I hate not knowing and I'm going to find out because I know goddamn well in 1995 that shit did not exist. And I know that shit did not exist in 2006. And I know that shit because other guys, otherwise guys would have been doing that shit forever. I mean, for Christ's sakes. It, 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 but again, Swoops, like, Reese chose to be the villain. She says, I'm the villain. But then she gets <laughs> mad when she's treated like the villain. She, she, she's, so, hold on, hold on. We did this before. I say you can't have your foot half in and half out. Is that you going to be a villain or not? I'm going to accept it. I'm okay with it. I like villains. I love people who feel like villain and accept it and embrace it. But when you're like, oh, I'm the villain, and the next day you cry, and I'm like, well, that don't make no sense. The villain doesn't cry. The villain accepts his fate. Or her fate. They'd be like, damn it, I lost this battle. I take it like a freaking man or a woman. It is what it is. The, 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 the person who's not the villain guy. But when the villain wins, the villain goes in your face and, and tell you about it and let you know it. But it's also a sex when they damn lose. But no, she does not accept it. She always finds a way to get in the front of the media and plays the victim. No, you're the villain. You can't play the victim. You can't be the villain and the victim. You can't do both. Pick one, man. I don't have trouble with either one. Listen here. Y'all gonna think that, oh, this is the black guy who's hating against 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 her. I'm not. I'm not. I, I like Reese game. I'm mean, not her game. I like her. I like Reese playing. I like watching her play sometimes. I like her motor. I like her effort. I told you she's Zach Randolph with short shorts on with, with long hair. She's the same person. She throws it at the backboard. She gets her own rebound. She puts it back up. She's a battler. She's a bruiser. She does it all the time. I love it, but embrace it. Embrace it. Don't come back to the media 
and, and, and try to pin it on Kate McClung when she gets the whistle or this and that, that, that. It's okay. Just take she, it. She also says that when, when, when Angel Reese got fouled, I don't know if I went over this or not. I don't think I went. When she got fouled, nobody talked about it. What are you talking about? Like, do you not have eyes? Do you not open your computer? Do you not watch TV? Even Gilbert Arena said, no, that was talked about for a week. Yes. Her fans went, her fans went crazy. Yeah. It was on the it was on TV for multiple days and her fans went nuts. It was all over my Facebook feed for a week. So yeah. don't sit here and that's cap. That's BS. And did it was talked about for a week. And did she had a jet. Did she not get as much attention as Caitlin Clark got for her? Of course not, because she's not Caitlin Clark. She's not gonna get what Caitlin Clark gets. And that's okay. And that's okay. But and one of the and one of the funny things that Gil said was it's a she's a guard. You're comparing yeah. a guard to, to a, a power big. forward. Who played it? Who played he said, he, And he said if, if, if Shaq hit Kmart, it would be nothing. Yeah. It would be something, but it would be nothing. If yeah. he hit me, if he hit me, that would hurt. Yeah. I'm gonna fall, I'm gonna be on the ground. Like the guard, like AI gets bumped. <laughs> you know, I mean I mean if Steph gets bumped, <laughs> he's flying. Mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark's a six foot, 155 pound, 160 pound guard. And when she gets chucked by a fucking six foot three, six foot four, 200, 215 pound fucking power forward, she's going to feel it. And when, and, and yeah, the, the Kennedy Carter thing with, with this guy with the chuck. Yeah. yeah. Did she, did she maybe, I don't know if she embellished it or not, because I know for a fact that she got chucked. And when you're not looking. It, yeah. You're going to fall. It, it's it, worse. It, it, it was for me. But I, but I, but I will also watch tonight where, you know, people are making these comments about how Caitlin Carson can complain her. You know what? Welcome to college women's welcome to basketball because I've watched multiple games over the past few days and they all complain. Every every, every call is, is complained about. The men complain about every call. Complaining and basketball are this. It's the same thing. Especially they always complain. Especially when you're a star. Yeah. LeBron James flops when he's breathed on. He flops when he's touched. He's flops when he's not touched. He he has, there's videos where he grabs his eye and the hit went like wind. And didn't touch him. Everybody is. Everybody, Everyone does it. Everybody trying to get a a, 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 a notch on the wrist or trying to get a foot up in the game. They they, they want to call. They, 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 they for call. They just, they want, you, you want you want them to change the officials to help you out a little bit and, and give you everything so you get to the free throw line so you can help your team win or call somebody else. Like you want everything to go your way on the court. Harden does it. Luca, man, no, it's well, I, I mean, but Luca doesn't get Luca doesn't get the crucifixion crucifixion coming at him the way because they all do it in the NBA. Everybody so, does so it. You know, I'm you, in the rest oh here. my god, they, they complain as a as, it's par it's par for the course in the sport. They mm-hmm. all complain. So I don't know what the hell she's talking about. Like yeah. she's ridiculous, yeah. and it's just it's just bothering me. It bothers me because it's like. You continue, and, and, and it's the same rhetoric from Drea Carter. It's the rhetoric from Monica McNutt. It's the rhetoric from fucking uh, Shini Agumake. Like, she made a video where she's holding her hands like, oh, my God, I wish they'd talk about the basketball. Really? The fact that they're just talking about the, that dreck for a sport, you should be thankful. Really? And then you want to tell the men who are talking about it how they should talk about it? Really? You want to know what? I should tell Kimberly Martin how to talk about football, right? Because she's really? never played football. Really? But really? We get to be critical of every sport in every league except for women's basketball. Everybody, like, every, every sport, when it's, when it's on the top and it's popping, we talk about everything that happens in that sport. We're critical of everything. The way you, you did the drop, the way you threw the ball. When you're flooded, that wasn't a perfect ball. The receiver made the play. Uh, that shot, it was a lucky. Uh, uh, what that guy did before the game or after the game that affected him in the game. Like, what he ate the night before, that's probably why he did. Like, everybody gets talked about, especially when you're the top. The top spread of her people are paying attention and they care about it. Like, you're going to get people talking about everything. You should embrace it because... Well, it's gonna get, it's gonna bring attention to the sport. And that's what you wanted. You can, you, can you? I'm sorry. Can you imagine being mad that Shaq or Charles Kendrick Barkley. Perkins or Charles Barkley or or um, Michael Porter Jr. 
who have made Draymond Green. These guys have all made these comments, right? Can you imagine being offended because guys that are making a freaking boatload of money that you dream of making, and then they give you a, a constructive criticism of your league and your game, and you're offended by it? But on the yeah, but Patrick Mahomes or Tom Brady is being is being analyzed by Mina Kimes or Kimberly Martin on how they throw a football and how they took a sack and what they shouldn't have done and how they should have done it and this and that and the other by two five foot three women who've never picked up a football and ever been hit by a defensive lineman in their life, at least those men have played the game at the highest level in their sport. These women haven't played even high school football. Hell, they probably ain't played little league football. And they're sitting here criticizing a quarterback like Tom Brady when he played, or Patrick Mahomes, or a running back, or a wide receiver, Josh Allen, or or Lamar Jackson. Like every time I hear, because Kimberly Martin is like one of the experts for the ES for ESPN, and I'm not trying to take a shot at Kimberly Martin, yeah, but I want yeah. I want you to I want people to understand how unfair it is that when when Stephen A. Smith comments about women's basketball, and I'm not a defender of Stephen A. Smith, but when the man comments and Shannon Sharp comments about women's basketball, you're offended because we're not talking about players that have been there. Newsflash, no one gives a shit about those players that have been there. No one cares that Connecticut just lost their first game a week ago. No one gives a shit. No one cares that the Houston Comets won the first four championships. Because if I asked you who won the four championships from 1982 to 1986 in the NBA, would you know? You probably wouldn't. I mean, you'd guess the Celtics or Lakers probably more. But you know what? In that in that time, Philly won one. Philly won one. Oh, it wasn't just the Celtics and the Lakers. Philly won one. So when you're going, because it was a uh, Celtics, Celtics, it was it was a uh, Dr. Eight, J. Malone. It was Dr. J. Malone, Barkley won there. Yeah, I think it was eighty three. <laughs> Celtics were eighty five. Lakers were eighty. Celtics were eighty two, eighty five, and no, eighty two, eighty four, eighty five, or something like that. But they, but there was the Philly was in there somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. And and but you're offended because people are commenting about your game and how to improve your game. You're a bug that someone says you should lower the rims. Why? Because we're watching 38 percent from the field from layups That's on your some of your better players. Yes. Like, and that's not just Angel Reese. No, it's not just. Miss guards, you're miss guards. Thirty-four percent in the field. You know, Lloyd shoots thirty-four percent in the field, and you put her on the Olympic team. Arike Gumbawale shoots thirty-seven percent. And by the way, she said she didn't want to be on the Olympic team. She took her yeah. name out. That's why she wasn't on it. So when people yeah. say she's snub, she wasn't snub. She says I don't want any part of it. Yeah, she said Kelsey it's a Plum, Yeah, Kelsey Plum shoots thirty-six percent from the field. She's one of your elite guards. Um, Diana Taurasi shoots thirty-seven percent from the field. One of your elite. Old people guards like these people are shooting at a level that's commensurate or lower than Caitlin Clark right now, but they're amazing and she can't take physicality. <laughs> and they're wide open and she's being double teamed all over the fucking floor because I've watched them all play and I've watched how open their looks are. And the first Caitlin Clark shot that has her towing the three point line will be never, <laughs> never. It will never happen for the yeah. duration of her career. She will never get one of those types of three-point shots ever because they're guarding her 35 feet from the rim, prompting her. They don't even catch if someone's right behind them. They're not even turning around. Now, they get, they might get lost now and again, mm -hmm. but they're not They're not even – the ball could be over there. I'm looking at her. As they if, should. She catches, if she's catching the ball, I'm here because if I look that direction and she backdoors me, I'm going to get screamed at. Yeah, you know, whatever. So I, I call that parking lot defense. I told you parking lot defense. Yeah. I've been calling the parking lot defense. So as soon as I post up in that parking lot, I want you better, Kate. I don't care. As soon as she gets out of the you should be better. Wherever she goes, you go. Don't worry about nothing else. You got to work out parking lot defense, baby. That's what I call it. Yeah. As soon as she comes in that parking lot, that's what you got, man. I don't care about nothing else. Nothing. 
Nothing. And when they and when they blink and those games where she's feeling it, she hits for thirty. Yeah. And they're still guarding her from twenty eight feet. Like there's these shots that she takes are largely still contested. Yeah. Even from twenty eight feet. Fading to the left. Fading to the left while she doesn't while she somehow pushes off at the same time. You know. Yeah. But you know, uh, it's it's just it's just it's it's continued disappointment um, because these all these women who claim to want attention from me, Monica McNutt. Got a State Farm commercial. Oh my God, Monica is in the State Farm commercial. Monica McNutt got a State Farm commercial the week after that freaking crap with Stephen A. Smith. Mm. You think that's a coincidence? No, it happened right after. It happened, happened right after. There's it no happened. way in the world that you're giving a sports announcer a a freaking State Farm commercial that nobody knows of. That no one knows who she is. They gave it to her. It was literally on TV with a week or a week and a half after that. She went. She did her thing on Stephen A. Smith and became fucking famous over Caitlin Clark. And she was in it with some player. I don't remember what which player it was because who cares? Because no one knows who these players are. Yeah. Literally, remember when these, these, these State Farm commercials started last year? They were with Caitlin Clark and Jimmy Butler. Yeah. Caitlin Clark and Jimmy Butler. Initially, obviously, Chris Paul back in the day, you know, for men. But women, it was Caitlin Clark. And now she's in the WNBA, and now WNBA players are getting the benefits of Caitlin Clark. And they don't see it. They don't want to stay. They refuse to accept that they didn't call you for you because no one knows who you are. Did you know who Jewel Lloyd was? I remember you said, who? If I showed you the commercials with her in it, you wouldn't know, know that's her unless they say her name. Mm-hmm. You, if, you, if you walk right by her in the street, you're like, who the fuck even, is that? Even the we went on um, Shannon Sharpton podcast, and I was like, who the hell is that? And then she like, oh, I didn't want to be. I was like, oh, okay, that's her. Okay, cool. Yeah, and, and yet she's sitting here having a – she did a, she did a, an entire thing, a, a, a video, uh, personally, where she had music behind it, and oh, I wish they would talk about – it just bothers me so much that they don't talk about the basketball. Like, the basketball. Like, we don't what, what, what? We don't even do. We don't do that about every sport. So all the sports we talk about other things. We're not just about the sport. It comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. Like we're gonna sit and talk about Bronny James, and, and, and we're not talking about basketball. It's not a basketball. It's not really a basketball topic. It's a nepotism topic. It's yeah. a it's a manipulation of, of of status and position topic. Colin Coward went on some long shit. Uh, today or yesterday that I saw posted where he's where he went on the thing, but we'll jump into that in a second. You know, yeah. you want them to talk about whatever they can possibly talk about that makes people click, makes people view. I told you last week, I'm going to go out of my way to make videos about some other people just to do it, just to do a test. And, and when I'm proven right about that test, when I don't hashtag or mention Caitlin Clark in that video, let's see who watches it because no one's going to watch it. Heck, and I call the glorified role player. He's a glorified role player. And you know, nobody watched that shit. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Man, he's a nobody, nobody, like, I would think it would trigger the Kyrie beat-offs to say, yeah. you're stupid. But the reality is, most people agree with us. I said he's not a top 75 player. Most people agree with us. Just because the NBA narrative and the manipulation of first take and, and all these different shows, because they have to promote him as something, because otherwise... Who the fuck is going to watch that trash can of the series? Look at the scores. Game one, blowout. Game five, blowout. Game four, blowout. Game three was a blowout okay. in, until the fourth fourth quarter. It was a blowout. Game two, what was the final score of that game? They won by seven, right? They won by like seven. The only real non-blowout, the duration of the game. Game three was a blowout going into the fourth quarter. That was the most unentertaining NBA Finals that I have seen in forever, even more entertaining than the one last year with the Nuggets and the Heat. Ooh. And that was a pretty fucking terrible series. Only because we're Heat fans. And I'm a Heat fan, but that was a terrible series. Yep. But it wasn't worse than the series that I just saw. It was awful. Th- that was bad. Right. And the fact they had a week and a half gap between basketball, the 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 the, 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 the pregame, the postgame, the, the lead up, who gave a shit? Nobody cared. No, it was boring. It was uninspiring. And then listening to all these whiners cry about how Tatum didn't get the MVP. 
I saw that on Gills Arena as well. Nick Young is like way over the top. He got um, mad. He was mad. He sounded high the whole damn time. Okay. But, oh, the, you, you know, know McCants was like Jalen Brown's the MVP. It's like not even he was yeah. the best player. Because we got all these people that throwing these 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 shows with the next level stuff. The no guy has ever led a team in points and rebounds and assists yes. and not got the MVP. Um, motherfuckers, we watched the game. <laughs> we watched the game. Tell me about all those stats and all that bull crap and all the numbers stats all you want to. And we watched the game. The people who mm-hmm. watched the game know what happened. The people they don't take it into account. The best, they don't take it into account. And he was banning the best players on the other team, eighty-four feet and locking them up. They don't. They don't take into account to that. And the next level stats when they go to points, rebounds, and assists. It don't. Yeah. None of that. We people who watched the game understood what happened and why Jalen Brown got MVP. And it's plain as simple as that. So you can next level stat me to death all you want to, and yada 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 yada. Well, it's a first for everything, and this is the first that it's going to happen. And Jalen Brown got it, and he deserved it. And they ignored the and they ignored the fact that with their next level stats, the most efficient player on the floor for three ga- first three games was Jalen Brown. Yeah, the first three games we needed. Think- the, the biggest pressure. shots, the biggest shots in all the games were Jalen Brown. The first three games when you needed him, when the pressure was sort of on, he made Jaylen it. Right. But when it was 3 0 and, you know, and 3 1, and we kind of said chill a little bit. We, we, we saw the fourth quarter. We saw who was handed the ball to shoot the ball every fucking time, yeah. pretty much over the last five minutes to fluff up his numbers to make it look like he just, like he didn't have, I mean, that, that 31 and 11 it was 23. Yeah. <laughs> It was 23. They were running 1-4 the whole freaking fourth quarter, the last five minutes of the fourth quarter of 16, 18, 20. Who knows to, to, to Tatum, though? He didn't make them shots. He made it. He played. He made, he the, he made two lucky ones and two layups. I mean, great. But if you look at the full picture, it was Jalen Brown. It's a team. It's not a one-game set. It's a series. Yeah. It's a series. And 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 when I hear Gilbert Arenas was points, but I don't care. You know what that tells me? It tells me that you know what position Jalen Brown like people people forget. You know what position Jason Tatum plays for the Celtics? He plays power forward. Power oh, forward. He plays power forward. He's guarding the power forward. You know what that means? He's by the rim. Because if he was guarding Luca or Kyrie, he would not be by the rim to he, grab 11, 10, 12 rebounds a game. He did guard like, him. He, he did guard him a lot. Though. On really, switches. On yeah, switches. Yeah, on he's, switches. He's guarding PJ Brown. He's guarding Derek Lively. He's by the rim. He plays power forward for that team. Yeah. Jalen Brown's playing Jalen Brown's playing small forward or shooting guard. Yeah. And 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 so there's a difference. Otherwise, like, I mean, remember LeBron doesn't average 16 rebounds a game in the regular season. He averages seven. In the playoffs, he's a becomes this fucking power forward machine grabbing rebounds. Okay. Because he's playing next to the rim. He's playing bigs. You know, but you know, that that. I will do them videos because I just and just off the off the side on the cuff and and I will post them and we will see who gets real 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 reviews and real footage. The fact that Derek White's broken tooth got more views on YouTube than Kyrie Irving being called a glorified role player That's tells crazy. you all you need to know. That's crazy. So we'll jump into this next topic. I mean, we went an hour on this one, man. I'm fine with it because I get to chop up a whole lot of stuff y'all really love. Rich Paul says LeBron is. All is off his idea of having to play with Bronny, Paul told ESPN. If he does, he does. But if he doesn't, he doesn't. I call oh. bullshit. There's no deal made that it's guaranteed that if the Lakers draft Bronny at 55, LeBron will resign. If that was the case, I would force them to take him at 17. We don't need leverage. The Lakers yeah. can draft Bronny okay. and LeBron doesn't resign. Okay. That's bull- we know that's bullshit. LeBron okay. is also not going to Phoenix for a minimum deal. We can squash that now. I don't think he'd ever go for a minimum deal anywhere. If Bronny's name was Charles Jacobson, he and he was my client, I would do the same thing. Identify teams that have real interest. I'm going to say one thing real quick, and I'll let you go. If your client's name was Charles Jacobson, first of all, that wouldn't be your client because you wouldn't have. Uh, it's highly unlikely that it'd uh, uh, be a Jewish basketball player, because I don't think there's about one in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, but he'd also be telling you to go back to school <laughs> to hone your game more because the fact that you would sit here and say that you would say the same thing, like that's just a joke. You would be telling that guy if he was averaging 5.8 points per game and shooting 27% from three, you would be telling Charles Jacobson to go, go, back, back, to, to go back to school. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He wouldn't be telling Charles Jacobson that. 
he wouldn't be he wouldn't be representing Charles Jacobson. <laughs> That's the first point. If if Charles Jacobson averaged five points at that uh USC, you know, he wouldn't be representing him. He I don't even know the kid name, you know, so that right there is just crazy in itself. Like he would not be representing that guy, so you wouldn't have to worry about that. So um but I don't know, Rich Paul is pulling um Rich Paul moves. He has earned it now. He's putting himself as a echelon of uh, of uh, agents, and, and he's known around the league, and he kind of have a power cord that he can pull when he wants to. So if he says that that he could get Bronny drafted with the 17th pick if he wanted to to keep LeBron, who are we to say? That, who are we not to believe? He says that the uh, the Mavs GM is like Bronny's uncle, so that's another spot Bronny could go to. Um, so at the end of the day, Bronny will go somewhere, but. He's trying to pull these cords for a player who's, you know, should be a second round, maybe to no round draft pick that he needs a guaranteed deal for. Um, she's really pulling that LeBron cord. I mean, he got in there, he got in there as an agent because of LeBron, but it looked like he's taking the next step to be that guy to to pull strings when he wants to and how he wants to. That's why we say um, when people say things is politics, it really is politics, man. Um, I know a lot of football players are like, man. I was one of the best players in that camp and, and when I went to their camp and, and they ended up cutting me, man. It was politics. And they damn right for the most part. There are some players who are god awful. I don't care what they talking about. You got cut because you just suck. Some players, man, this other player's getting already getting guaranteed money. Um, this player knows this knows the G knows the GM. His agent knows the GM. So they're in, you know, they they're intertwined like that. So sometimes it is politics and that's how it works, man. I'm not mad at it anymore because it is what it is. It probably screwed me out of getting another shot in the NFL. But hey, it is what it is, man. That's just how it works sometimes. And people in power, they use their power. It ain't for all for good. It's not all for evil. But they use it, man, and that's just what it is, man. Suck it up, man. Bronny might Bronny's gonna get drafted. We're going to live with it. Bronny's getting drafted, Woody. Whether you like it or not, he's getting drafted. Are you clapping your hands every time you say a word? No, that's probably my thighs. Clap some thighs. Clap some thighs. <laughs> I mean, it's very, very loud. Okay. Um, Let me stop talking about thighs. I call bullshit. I call bullshit on all of it. It, it, it. This is what agents are supposed to do. Yeah, I can play this, it. This is, their, this is their job. They, they, well, hype their, they hype their client up, even though it's a lie. So um, I'm going to say he's going to be in the first round. Because that because that's such a bold that's such a ridiculous lie that every, no one on earth would believe it. Why? Um, I can say the why? Because it's not good enough. He's not even remote good enough. The team it, from twenty three and thirty was like, oh, he's not, a- no fucking chance, no <laughs> fucking chance. There's no. A lot of they just tell bullshit lies all the time. Just, and, and they tell bullshit lies that are believable. <laughs> lies lies by agents that are not believable are not worth telling. If you have a lie, it needs to be remotely believable for the public to buy it. It, it, it. So you can sit here and say, well, why not say, oh, he's the first round pick? No, he's not, because we've all got eyes. And none of us are that fucking dumb. So you can't, mm-hmm. you can't put a freaking whoop, a, a bag over our head and say, oh, yeah, Ronnie's a great, great player. No, he's not. He's a, he's a mediocre college player. He's a mediocre to below mediocre college, below average player as a freshman. Could he become a better player yeah. in college? Absolutely. Much better? Not really. But he could become a better player. That said, he's not a pro. And the fact that they, they don't work out for anybody. Yeah, it, that's, it, that's the crazy that, part. That's ridiculous. And to me, that's to me, if I'm a pro, if I'm a guy who was playing college ball, I'd be so bothered by that. And maybe maybe it's because this is my career you're fucking with. Okay. Because you're fucking with these guys' careers and these opportunities that are, are like I can't stand every second that the Nasus Antetokounmpo is in the NBA because of Giannis. It is it is such a problem in, in my opinion that this guy who is nothing more than a glorified cheerleader mm-hmm. and has no skill. He would he couldn't even play in Europe. Like he could barely play in Europe right now. And he's making all it look good for him. He's making this money. He now has a podcast or finalysis, whatever the hell that crap is. Like, who, why, why would anyone watch that? Although I've seen a couple of funny clips off of it. But he blew his Achilles on vacation. 
He's oh. out for next season. So he can, all he can do is, you know, clap and, and be a cheerleader again. I collect his money. But it's like the fact that he's in the league is no, crazy. No, While there are so many guys that are so much better than him. It's bullshit. That not getting, but it's not. And, and to me, like, this is the one. This isn't like any other. This isn't like any other industry. I'm about to say any other job or business or. Of course. Sports are not like any other job industry. Because you can be – because the jobs in, in, the, in the NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, all these professionals, work, they're limited. They're very limited. You think Shane McMahon had to earn his job at the WWE with Vince McMahon when Vince McMahon was the CEO? No. No. But that's what, but what it is. But, 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 that, but, but he owned the league. He owned the, he owned the company. Did that prevent someone else from getting a job? No. So why is it all – does it only stop in sports? Why I can't? Why? Because because they're not, because there's not preventing someone from becoming employed in sports. The jobs are so limited and the times are so truncated for your career. Like you're gonna sit here and tell me as a former pro athlete that if you knew that Tom Brady's son, who's five foot three and 132 pounds. I don't, set, I don't know how tall he is or how big he is. They set in a precedent. That's a bad. But like, like if, if Tom Brady's son, who was a a, a six foot, hundred and sixty five pound, wide receiver, who ran a four nine in the forty, but let's say I'm sorry, cornerback, four nine in the forty, playing at cornerback, and got a job over you, that wouldn't drive you out of your fucking mind that's because terrible. only because of, but that but that's the thing, and it's, and then this it, is this again. This, this is not like comparing dad who owns a financial firm hiring his son or his daughter. Why? Because it was his. He owns it. He yeah. owns it. LeBron James does not own any franchise, <laughs> anything in the NBA, well, even if he thinks he does. He does not own it. All right. Secondly, basically, in, in order to but in, be in to make money, but in order, I don't make when he retires, they'll still make money. Not as much. But, as you would make with him. Bullshit. Bullshit. And I'll tell you right now, why? Because the ratings in the NBA are worse today than they were 25 years ago. I'm saying for that team that LeBron is on, they won't make as much the money. Lakers? The Lakers? The Lakers? The Lakers are sold out. You know, the, you know, the Lakers are sold out to eternity, bro. You don't, you don't, think, they, you don't think they make more money and charge more no, when they get LeBron? No, 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 no. Because they don't charge more. They don't charge less today than they charged 10 years ago with the Heat for, for retail season tickets. Yeah, you got Jimmy Butler. He's just as good as LeBron. There was a there was a there was a gap, where, and Jimmy Butler is not LeBron. <laughs> like, come on, I can still sell my Lakers tickets for a thousand dollars. Oh my god! Because LeBron is a LeBron is a second a th a third party re a third second party vendor. You know, scalping tickets coup for most people. Yes, he still remains that because people know he's limited. If Michael Jordan came back to play today at sixty three. The tickets would cost ten thousand dollars in the upper deck, and he couldn't walk. <laughs> like we, the Florida Panthers to sit in the upper deck yesterday versus the the, the Edmonton Oilers because we thought we were going to win and thought we were going to be able to hold host the cup at home. The upper deck tickets were over a thousand dollars. We lost, so now we got to go do it in Edmonton. I don't want to come back for games. I don't want to come back for game seven. Let me win in Edmonton. I'm happy to watch it on television. Uh, and, and break their fucking hearts up there. But it, it, if you're if you have a financial firm, what do you need to do in order to be uh, to to work in that in that field? You gotta get licensed. Mm -hmm. You gotta go to school. You or, or you have to take you know yeah. SEC whatever the series sixty six or the two one five or whatever the test required to sell stocks and insurance or whatever it is. Series six, series six, not series six, <laughs> series six. So you, you're. You have to take these classes. LeBron, Brian James, did he even go to class? It, his class, like, he, his class basketball. Yeah, he wasn't good yeah, enough. Listen, in terms of that, his class is basketball. His class is basketball. You know, he's not good enough. He didn't pass the tests. Extra credit. He, he did not pass the tests. Extra credit. He did not pass the tests to make him worthy of that job. Because dad can give the son the job, but if the son doesn't pass the test, the job ain't shit. Because he can't actually do the work. Extension. Colin Coward compared it to a, a lawyer, a, a father giving his son a job as a lawyer. Yeah, you know he went to law school. 
you know he had to pass the bar <laughs> to become a lawyer? Yep, yep. It's not the same thing. If I tell my kid and I'm a doctor, hey, son, I'm hiring you to be my do a doctor, but you're going to go to med school. You're going to pass your boards. This isn't the same. This isn't remotely the same thing. This guy did not go but for a semester of college. It was two, a semester and a half. He didn't go for. He didn't go to school in the spring. Stop. No. He went for a semester of college. Well, he, and, he, he probably went in the spring because he he wasn't for sure coming out yet. Maybe he went in the spring. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, I'm sure he was doing all his classes. Um, but nonetheless, you're comparing an apple to an orange. These professional leagues. You have a small window, and I and there are guys that are getting fucked over, like so, like a one spot, one spot is being used by a guy who can't play basketball, the Nasa Santetokounmpo, and there's probably a few others that are just like him, but none of them are are are, are brothers of the best player on the planet. I mean, John T. Porter probably, but he didn't play in the same team, and now he got himself kicked out because he was gambling. Yeah. But yeah, you know. And I don't believe Rich Paul for a second. I don't believe him for a second because there's no way in the world you're going to sit here and tell me that Bronny gets even picked up as a free agent by the we, Lakers. We get the fee and, in a week. And, and LeBron does not resign. We get the fee in a week, Rudy. One week. We get to find <laughs> out. Oh, will they have a coach yet? Will, will LeBron's assistant have been hired yet? Um. <laughs> AJ uh, Reddick's been the one interviewed, and I don't know who else is under consideration. They said they wanted to hire someone. They said they wanted to hire someone before the before the draft. I heard that Monty Williams might be getting um, some play, some consideration. But he, just got fired, he just got fired for being one of the worst coaches in the league for the Detroit Pistons. And, six, the Detroit and six, six, sixty-five million dollars. Can you imagine getting fired? Can you imagine hey, them, them not liking you so much? They'll take, they'll eat sixty-five million. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> You're telling me to not do anything, to stress about anything anymore. Unless it's just a little bit again. Okay, you know Monty Williams. And this is so off topic, but Monty Williams gets fired. You realize that Monty Monty Williams has a sixty-five million dollars to sit his ass home. Oh. Over the next five six years. Yeah. But, 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 but worse. But worse. I think maybe God. Okay, we're gonna go religion now. I think God was looking out for Monty Williams because he's been given a lot of bad luck he, on, a, got, on, a per, on a personal level, like a lot of tragedy, a lot of tragic shit. Yeah. His first wife died in a car accident. His second wife was diagnosed with breast cancer last year. Like this guy, still don't want. God damn, man! You get to go home. Oh, stay, stay, stay the fuck home and be with your fucking family, man. You might, you might use basketball to get away from it, man. Some people need it. Your wife has breast cancer. Stay home. He was supposed to stay home last year, but he, but the Detroit Pistons offered him so much damn money. He's like, I don't know about this. This is a lot of damn money to suck. These, <laughs> these idiots are giving me six. You're giving me seventy-eight million. <laughs> I mean, man. These so idiots I, I, are getting seventy-eight billion for six I, I years, or five years, or whatever it was. Whatever it was, but it was a lot. Right? It was like twelve but, billion. But but I call bullshit on on this Rich Paul thing. Why? Because I've seen agents do this song and dance before. Okay. Like I said to you earlier, Drew Rosenhaus was a, is an expert at it. He 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 made the, the he he convinced the Buffalo Bills that Willis McGay he would be healthy when the season started after his knee exploded versus Ohio State in a national championship game. And anyone with eyes saw which way McGahee's knee went. It did exploded that, the wrong direction. Did that pay, pay off? It paid off, though. Did it pay off? I mean, marginally. They were never that good. Willis um, was good. He was good with those. Willis was good for a few years. Um, he was. He's not a, a Hall of Famer or nothing like that, which I think in large no, part. but he was tough. That, that injury in, in that game was, 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 was catastrophic. Um, Let me see what he average. It was 2002. Um, he had 1,800 yards or so in, in that season uh, yeah. for the Hurricanes, and and was was dynamic. Mm -hmm. And then he never had he never had the same speed after that. Um, but he missed the full season pretty much. 1,100 you know, 1, yards his rookie year, 13 touchdowns, 1128, 47 his next year. Only nine, about five years. About 990 five years. then 1207. He yeah, came back they, on one miracle year in Denver. Yeah, so he, had what, he had like five, six, five or six 
good seasons. Yeah. Um, but his career was never the same. But Drew Rosenhaus, this is before social media, all these things, was able to basically hide that he could barely walk. You know, um, and there was no way in hell he'd be healthy. But he convinced the Bills to pick this man in the first round. Now, mind you, McGee, he would have been a top five pick had he not gotten hurt. So um, I've seen these agents pull this shit out their ass so many freaking times that I don't trust nothing they say. They're doing their jobs. They're supposed yeah. to do them. And I'm not going to be mad at them. But this is bullshit. <laughs> like, this is just a lie. This is like a, a, a hard to stomach lie. But uh, let's move into uh, your favorite topic. Quarterbacks who get overpaid. Uh, no, I hate so, this shit, Rudy. So the, so the, this shit, Rudy. No, I hate uh, this shit. So Jacks, the Jacksonville Jaguars have now signed Trevor Lawrence, who has all of one playoff win, to a five-year, $275 million extension. Um, $55 million a year. I don't know what the guarantees are. I'm guessing it's probably 150 or something like that. I'm not sure. Probably I'm not sure. But five years for 275. Does that make – do you think because of that, Dak Prescott can leverage the Cowboys for that type of deal, or would he be out of his mind? <laughs> okay. Dak Prescott is going to get $60 million a year. I freaking hate it. He's going to get $60 million a year. What are you going to do, not pay him? They're going to pay this man. If he don't get it for the Cowboys, some foolish team is going to give him that amount of money because what are you gonna, he's going to go over there and say, what's the quarterback name? Oh, I forgot his name already. Yeah. Blondie, Sunshine. Sunshine from Jacksonville Jaguars. So Trevor got, Lawrence. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence, yeah. Just got, yeah, call him Sunshine. He got $55 million a year. A year. The highest paid. That's, you know how this shit goes. When one person gets it, it just goes, it just balloons more and more and more. Just like when Jimmy Garoppolo got every, he didn't deserve it. He won like four games in a row for the 49ers. Oh, let's pay him the highest paid. Come on, man. Make these people have prove it. Make them call out there and show that they can run the team and, and be like, God, Trevor Lawrence hasn't done it yet. I know you're just worried that you might lose out. And if we don't pay him this now, yeah, it might come back at this later. But what if you pay him now and they still come back at you later because you gave him too much damn money and he never produces like he should produce or does anything because he doesn't prove that he don't be that guy and you just gave him the money already. What's going to happen to you? You got to prove it at least a little bit. He got one play off when he do another. Come on now, man. And now Dak Prescott, he's, he's going to go over there and say, hey, that guy's at it. He only won one play off yet. I won like three. <laughs> I won three playoffs game. I'm a top quarterback in this league. My numbers is, is most touchdowns in the league. And my interceptions went down last year. Come on, man. I got to get that man the money. And like I said, he's a top quarterback, a top eight to 12 quarterback. But should you get based on whatever the ad is, I really would do it. He's a top eight to 12 quarterback. Based on that, did that deserve? You called him number twelve. He can't be a top eight to twelve when you called him number twelve. I said he's between eight and twelve. You told and when me. I and when I gave you names and I said which one is better, you picked the other one until we got the twelve. No, 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 no. Number twelve. I, no, after eight, it was like iffy up and down. Like, maybe, maybe not. Iffy. I think he's better. I think he's better than Trevor Lawrence. And if Trevor Lawrence got that money, I believe his career is better than Trevor Lawrence for sure. I, I, I his career is far better this, than Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, at this moment, he's better than Trevor Lawrence. At this moment, until Trevor Lawrence proves otherwise, I don't know. Well, what do you mean is better? I mean, better than what? Than Trevor better, Lawrence. Better than better than what? Better than Trevor Lawrence. What, what, what is that? What, what is that? What is Trevor Lawrence? Number twenty? Seventeen? And he's around 15. 15. Yeah. If he's 15. If he's 15, does that make Dak 14? No, Trevor's between 12 and 15. Because Trevor's won a playoff game faster than Dak Prescott did. Yeah, but we're talking about at this point. We can't, we can't, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know. I just, made, I just made that up, by the way. Okay. <laughs> no, because Dak Prescott, no, his first year they lost. They lost to Green Bay. Yeah, they were good, and then they lost their first game. So that's they why I'm like, because. I don't know. They didn't win their first game until the Detroit Lions had, had the lead. That debacle that happened when they got robbed. When uh, I think Coach Paul was his team. 
and they didn't, they didn't call it a pass in the fence. That was clearly pass in the fence. It was something like that. And they, and they finally go through. But yeah, that press this very moment is better than Trevor Lawrence. He's proved it. He's, he's more consistent, you know, day in, day out. Trevor Lawrence, he started he had a terrible year last year. He was not good, man. The Jaguars started off slow because of him. They got Maryland, and then they came back down there because of him also. So. One thing I learned about that is going to get about. He's going to be it. right in the middle of the road. Trevor Lawrence is going to be hot one day. He's going to be cold the next day. And that's the guy who decided to give him money to. I don't agree with him. I don't like it. But Dak is going to get his money in. There's nothing you can do about it. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Make these points by getting paid like this. But they shouldn't be getting paid like this because they're not that good compared to the rest of the players on the team that are that good. Stop it. Stop giving these guys these money mess. Come on, man. Come on, Come on, man, let's play together. Let's get money to all people that deserve it. And that's a good quarterback because he's the quarterback. And he's the leader of the team, but he's the face of the franchise. He, just because he's a face, that don't mean he's a pretty face. <laughs> just because he's a face, that don't mean he's a pretty face. That don't mean you have to give it to him. Come on, man, stop doing it. Get, disperse his money to all these other players. But Dak's going to get his money. He's better than Trevor Hodge. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't even care. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't even, I don't even care. Uh, I think the Trevor Lawrence thing is embarrassing for the league that you pay a guy who's won one playoff game and is has a has a below five hundred overall record as a quarterback. That's the um, main thing. He's five, four, five years in now. I, I think it's embarrassing that they would pay him that much money. Um, it, it it just it's just so bad because there are guys that are winning at a higher level. If we're gonna playoffs, regular season. I mean, I know we all care about playoffs, but you gotta. Be good in the regular season to get to the playoffs. He has weapons. He has weapons, and and it just it just bugs me that you and I'm not and I'm not pocket watching because people like to say, "Oh, you're pocket watch." I'm not pocket watching. I I, I watched a, a we Don sent us a hype video for CFL because we're gonna be doing a lot of CFL stuff, and I gotta learn more about the CFL. I literally felt bad for these guys for how much work that they have to. They they, 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 they gotta go through all this fucking videotaping and and, and photo taking and all this bullshit. And the highest paid player in the CFL is what? 300, 500, 600,000 dollars? 700,000 dollars a year? Mm-hmm. And in Canada, where that took, when you bring it to the, the US number, it's 73 cents to the dollar. Well, usually them quarterbacks, they live out there. They don't, they don't come here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, but just in, in terms of the average player in, the, in Canada makes like 100, 100 grand, mm-hmm. 150 grand. I don't know. You tell me. No, it's around like, 100. The, the base is like, the base is like, seventy five. Like, 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 think about, like think about that. This is a this is a football league in one of the largest countries in the world, what? and one that claims to be so caring about people and, and, and medical and all these different things that they claim to care. So why are the football players? I mean, there's twelve or ten, twelve teams. You're nah. telling me that there's no there's nine now. No. Nah. Nine. There used to be more than that, didn't there? At one uh, point, it was yes. it was before because they came into well, they had a couple teams in the United States. But what? Why in the world would these guys like? Is there no TSN televises everything? They don't. They don't. They don't advertise it like they should. The league doesn't market the game like they should. And, why not? And, and they lost viewership from the young fans. So a lot of people are older fans, and the older fans are. <laughs> You know, it's either they're dying or they're getting older and they don't want to go to the to the games as much, and they're not finding a way to market to the younger the younger demographic. Oh, what are they marketing? Curling? They have they're not mark Canada. They don't they're not high on like Canadians are. I've been around these people. They're not well, hockey. They're high on. They, they love their hockey. They love their hockey, but they're not into many other sports like that. Even the Raptors games in Toronto. They have so much other things to do in Toronto that they don't really do it much more than that. They go to the Maple Leafs game, but it, it's not an interest in them. They, they think, at least in Toronto, they, they're Buffalo Bills fans. They go down there to Buffalo. I know, I know, yeah, I know they're Buffalo yeah, yeah. Bills. But the rest yeah. of the league, um, SAS has a pretty good following. Winnipeg has a good following. Um, man, shout out to the BC owner, man. He's came in the past couple of years. They had it. They were really slow, man. They were not getting fans in there. And the new owner came in. He started marketing to the young, younger demographic. Last game, they had fifty thousand there at the season opener. You know what they did? They got fifty cents to come perform at halftime. 
That was a marketing tool that's starting to get the younger fans in there. Even if they don't stay the whole game, they bought merchandise, so they at least they got an opportunity to watch the game and probably become an amateur. Even if they gain 10 new people that joined, that's, that's a win for them. But they don't market the game enough. TSN don't do a good job of, of talking about it enough on their, on, on, on their sports show. Um, they only show it on TSN. They don't have it on, like, the regular channel. Like, you know, we have it on ABC and CBS. They don't have it on theirs. You know, I think they just finally bring it back to there this year. But they don't do it like they used to. They used to have it like that, but they slowed it down, and now that being brought down. So give me the exact number. Give me the exact number. What is the average salary? You said 150 grand? So that would probably be around the average um, because you have a couple you have a couple players that's making 700, many, 200. Okay, but average, average is average. Yeah. How average. many players How many players per team? Um, there's 44 on the roster, on the active roster, and uh, two that's, you know, on the unactive roster that could be on the active roster. Well, let's say, let's just go 46. Yep. 19. Yep. So you're telling me that Trevor Lawrence makes almost as much as money as the entire fucking league? Yeah. More. That's a problem <laughs> to me. That's no. a problem to me. And I think and I think it's it, I think it's eye opening because it shows that guys are actually playing football up they there because they love love playing football. Yeah. And these guys here don't love playing football. They love what football brings, not the actual fact that they love. They may have loved football in high school and little league. They don't play football because they love football. They play football because it, of the of the money it brings them. And I'm not gonna, that's, I'm not that's, gonna, that's that's I'm not gonna say that for everybody. Really, most uh, okay, okay. Yeah, every, 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 okay. I'm, I know when I say I mean, something, I never, I, I never mean, say it's never absolute. It's never saying. everybody. Yeah. As Tom Brady, Tom Brady took pay cuts to play. Yeah. Tom Brady took pay cuts to get ballers next to him, whereas Patrick Mahomes ain't taking pay cuts. No, all right. No, and, 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 that. I mean, he his, he, he, he made his initial his time. initial contract was for four hundred million dollars over like ten years, like. He was the highest paid player in the league when he signed that deal. No, he had the biggest contract. He wasn't the highest paid player. Yes, he was. His 40 mil was the highest average when he signed it. No, it was when, when he signed it. Bro. Unless okay. when he signed his deal, he was the highest paid player in the league. Still, and then other guys start he jumping still, him. He's still been you taking think, haircuts, though, because even, you know, they found a way to, you know, to. to how, many hair, I'm, 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 how many haircuts uh, has Dak Prescott taken? He, he should be taking a lot of haircuts. Because he, he seriously didn't take a haircut in his last contract. No, he should be getting a lot of haircuts. He should be at the barber shop every because, week. Be, he because be, he should be at the barber shop every week. Or every Tom week. Brady. Tom Brady took more than haircuts. Yes. Yeah. He, Tom he, Brady was never the top paid player in the yeah, league. But, you know, uh, he was the top player in the league uh, for he, twenty fucking years. Uh, he basically went to the to the barber and said, "Give me the Rudy Rudy show my. <laughs> <laughs> So I I just I feel bad. I almost wish that some – and look, I don't say nothing absolute because there are guys in the NBA. Like, every time people say, you know, they don't love the game. Well, Derek White loves the game. He played 82 games. Mm. I think he, I think he played 82 games. Um, but there was, a, there was a few guys that played 82 games. When you play 55 games and you're not hurt, you don't love basketball. When you, when you find reasons to sit and mm-hmm. not play, Rudy, you don't love the game. You're not keeping me off the field, on the court. So I'm saying they don't love the game. They love the money. I was so pissed off with my coach. We was like, we was eleven and one one year, man. And it was like the last two years we were coming back from COVID, so they cut. They made the league a little bit shorter. So um, my coach was like, I'm in office, like, hey Nick, we're sitting you this week. No, the hell you weren't. I don't even know how much time I got left to play. Now look at me, I'm not playing anymore. I wanted to play every game, every minute, every practice. I didn't even sit out. My DB coach is coming. Hey. Hey, yo, Nick, they call me up. Hey, up. Man, relax, man. You don't need to be practicing. You know, we know what you can do, man. Don't, man, this, I love this shit, coach. I'm not sitting the fuck out. I don't care if it's just practice. I want to be out here with my team. I just want to be out here running around. This is my happiness. I enjoy it. I love this. I wear this shit on my fucking sleeve. I wear this on my chest. I, like, I don't know. I'm not going to say I don't know what I'd be without it, but it's that damn important to me that I have to be out here for my team, for me, for it's just what I'd love to do, man. So you're not keeping me off the field. I mean, at the end of the day, coach, coach, I didn't play. I mean, coach had the last decision, but I mean, I, I made it very known in him. Coach, I want to play this game. I don't care if I get hurt. That's just what it's just what happens. I, I can't go because it could it could have been the first game of the playoff, the first play of the playoff. I come out there and I get hurt. Like I 
can't control that. As long as I'm doing everything I can do off the field to take care of my body, strengthen and recover, I mean, I'm going to have to live with the results, man. You can try to hold myself off. And me holding myself off, I might get hurt by doing that. You never know how these injury things work, man. So just, I just play. And, and 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 that's and that's all I'm saying. Like I don't, I almost feel, I feel bad for those guys because like they play because they love it. And these guys in the NFL, they're so worried. All they're worried about is their next deal. They're worried about their next contract. They're worried about setting themselves up for lives and the lives of their family. And, and I and I understand that. And I get and I get and I get that. Mm-hmm. You want you know what I also get? I know that fans are spending a fortune to watch what I consider. I mean, I feel that way about pretty much every sport nowadays. A substandard product. Because I grew up watching football, and this is not what I grew up watching. I watch basketball. This is not what I grew up watching. Baseball is starting to do some of this dumb shit that I cannot. Like, the Yankees just lost. Why? Because they put a fu- they have this, this ghost runner in extra innings, which costs people games, which in turn costs you the playoffs, oh. which is not real baseball. Oh, they start on second base or something like that, right? They start on second base. This all happened because of COVID, and they never went back to the real way to play baseball, which was no one's on base in extra innings. <laughs> now in the playoffs, <laughs> they, 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 they goes back to real baseball. But if I lose ten games because of a ghost runner, because all it takes is an error, a flub ball, it's and anything can happen. You know, they lost tonight because a guy threw the ball into left field. You know, on on an attempted steal. But also the, the hit before was a pop-up that if there's no one on second, it's a single. Mm-hmm. You, you know, so this is not baseball anymore to me. So these leagues are fucking with the sport. They're, they, football is powder puff. And, and NFL. NFL football is powder puff because I can't speak on Canada um, intelligently. NBA is powder puff, soft. The only sport that I really love watching today is – MMA and boxing, the two sports I love watching, MMA and boxing, primarily MMA. Boxing for big matches, yes, absolutely. MMA, I will watch MMA all day. I'll be watching BKSC. Um, I love combat sports because you cannot cheapen combat sports. You cannot throw in all these rules to make it not physical. And all these sports continue to damage their sport. There's a reason why no one watched the NBA Finals. There's a reason why Caitlin Clark outdrew the NBA Finals. There's a reason why against the Chicago Sky at 12 noon on Father's Day. There's a reason when the, re- the ratings for the NBA are worse today, despite all their attempts to make it exciting with all these points and removing rules. No tra- traveling, you can run, you can walk eight feet. And no one will say nothing. We have video after video of guys picking up the ball, taking five steps, dribbling the ball again, and no one calling traffic. Like, how many steps does this guy get to take? We missed it, Rudy. We missed it, Rudy. Yeah, they, 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 they always miss it. I mean, you, you, watch, you watch this stuff, and this isn't ball. And they've done everything in NFL to remove the contact, remove the hitting. Now we're going to have the most funky-looking, quirky kickoffs ever. Yeah, let's just not. Let's, better, better than it was before. How, well, no, it, it's not better. If it was better, they'd move the goddamn kicker back to the 10-yard line no. and make him keep that shit fucking, and, and people would return that shit from the 20. It's better than it was before. You weren't getting it's anything. Better. You weren't getting anything. You had to get some well, returns. Now. Nick, 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 they at one point did have the kickoffs back to like the 20, and they changed it. No, no, they I keep get, fucking I, with it. I get what you're saying, but you weren't getting anything from the special teams. So now, so now I'm going to get a bunch of kickoff returns for touchdown, that I don't want to have either because football is not just played on special teams. When you have time, if the Dolphins don't have Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle and Devin Chain back there returning kicks, kickoffs, I'm going to have a real problem with Mike McDaniel. It should be, it'll be a chain. I don't think you put Waddle or uh, Tyree you, you need two or three of those guys back there. Yeah. That's my two of those. Two of those three guys should be back there because yeah. those guys are speed burners who they hit the hole, the shit's over. Mm. And but that's not football either to me. It's not. That's XFL hokey bullshit that they make up for, for I mean, I don't I don't believe in that crap. If it's given too much, then they're gonna take it away. But rules change but, but, need, but, really. you got, you got, No, but 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 rules rule Nick, football was about hitting, man. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Hitting. There's no hitting in football anymore. They're still hitting. It's just there's no hitting it's, like it's, the it's controlled hitting. Controlled hitting? <laughs> 
It's controlled it. It's controlled punching. Yeah. You can't straighten your arm. You can only punch him with your elbow bent. Like, th- this is ridiculous. You have defensive linemen that are being fined for tackling somebody. Because they can't tackle the QB high. They can't tackle him low. They don't tackle him. I mean, they can't land on him. Even when they don't land on him, they still get called for it. They don't tell him in their navel. It's a penalty. But well, mind you, while this happens, they're being tackled from behind by a left tackle or a right tackle. Who pushes him into the damn quarterback? But you know what? You know what that is? Because now these contracts, the quarterbacks are getting 55 million, so they have to protect their ass. I, I wish they would cap pro football. To like a max deal of like twenty five million for a quarterback, like because this stuff. Because when I see yeah. guys who play for love and I see guys who play for money, if Tua Tagovailoa gets two hundred and seventy five million dollars, I will never watch another Dolphins. So I have a problem with that's the thing. When I have a problem with somebody getting two million a game, and then you got this other person who's busting his ass and he's getting one million for the whole year. Because Tua, because Tua has arguably been better than Trevor Lawrence. How can, how can you, how can you, how can you justify somebody get two million per game and somebody, game. and somebody getting a million for the season? Nick, 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 the, Trevor Lawrence makes three million a game. 18, 17 games, fifty-five million. That's over three million a game. Because you know he's not going to play it down in the preseason. And you got a rookie who's busting his ass, protecting him on the Come on, line, man. On the line like, man, I have a problem. I, I guess, again, this ain't pocket watching, but this is not, this, this is so out of whack what's happening with these contracts in the NFL for quarterbacks. TV deals. And, but, and they're going to be on TV deals. And I'm not, I'm not saying that people, they shouldn't get paid. I'm just saying it should be spread out a little bit more evenly. Throughout the rest of the team, that's it, all it, I'm it, saying. Cap, cap it by position. That's all you can cap it by position. But you know what? TV deals are great. You know what I say to all that? How often do owners of companies spread their fucking financial wealth with their employees? I think the fact that these owners have, and and I'm, I'm I know I'm going to probably ruffle feathers here. They don't have to do this. Like, people bought teams back in the day because it was an ego. Mm-hmm. Like, these these rich billionaire, multi-millionaires, back in those mega, like, multi-millionaires. They were losing money. They, bought, they were, lo- teams lost money. Go look at Yankee Stadium in 1998 when the Yankees won 114 games. The upper deck of Yankee Stadium, upper deck of Yankee Stadium was empty. Now the Yankee Stadium has 48,000 fans a game. It doesn't matter if it's raining, snowing, hot, cold. It doesn't matter. But in the 80s and 90s, Yankee Stadium was largely empty, and they won four World Series in the late 90s. They were bad in the 80s, but in the late 90s, we the Yankees were 96, 98, 99, 2000. And then they were in the World Series again in 2001, uh, in the World Series in 2003, and, and 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 then they won it again in 2009. Like, they they fill their stadium all the time. But these teams largely lost money. Y'all definitely didn't win it, Y'all definitely didn't win it in 2003. No, uh, we went. We went. We lost to the Mar- We lost to the Marlins. Oh, okay. That, I was just going to say. Okay. We, lost to the, we lost in 2001 to the, to the Diamondbacks. Yep. We lost in 2003 yeah. to the Marlins, and then we won in 2009. Randy Johnson. Uh, yeah. What's my yeah. guy? Fish Schilling. Uh, yeah, uh, it was more, it was it was because Mario Rivera blew it in the ninth. What's my, the game one? What's, my, what's the hitter for them? Number twenty. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, Mark, yeah. I don't, Mark Grace. Yeah, like fifty sure. dollars that year or fifty. I don't, I, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> okay, I don't care. Luis, I, I, all I know is Luis Gonzalez. There you all, go. I, all, all I know is that these teams, owners bought teams. They weren't profit centers. So if it's a profit center now, why am I sharing my profit with players? I'm already paying them a fortune. Why don't I pay them more? Because at the end of the day, and I know this probably ruffles people. So you're, you're siding with the rich guy. No, I'm not. I'm siding with the person who paid for the fucking team. That They're not being dictated what they got to pay people. Like, this is their business. They're, this is their company. The same way I'm sure the owners of these teams in Canada are multimillionaires. Mm-hmm. And could pay guys a lot more than they're paying them, but they don't. 
but they don't. I'm sure they could pay them more than 75000 $75, as a base salary, but they don't. And you got players, uh, rookies that are that are living in one bed. Think about right now how expensive it is to live in Miami. Shit. Tell me about it. What's the base contract for a football player right now in the NFL? 700 grand? Close to a million. 800, 800 grand? They're close to it now. And they, get, and they get that sports tax that's half their salary? Hmm. That's half their salary? A one-bedroom apartment right now in Miami is going to cost them $3,000 for a mediocre one? Like, they're – obviously, they're not going to be in, impoverished or like that. No. But that money's not going to last them in the next 30 years. That, that money won't last them for – and their career is likely over by the time they're 27. That's why That's why the top players are like, that's why I'm getting my money. <laughs> you know, but, but I, I – yeah, it, it's just weird to me how, the, how, how professional sports has gone so far down in terms of quality. Because right now, the NBA wanted so badly to have all these high-scoring games. And what'd you get? You got high-scoring games with no defense, yet they have less people watching than they had in 1998 when Michael Jordan was playing the Chicago Bulls. They played defense this series. Really. And, those, and, those game, and those games were played in the 80s and the 90s. Really, they I played, thought the points mattered. They played, they played defense this series. Yeah, I know, because they can, because they choose not to. I told you, they choose not to. They choose I, to not play defense. We had this conversation. We no, play. they choose not. So anyhow, uh, uh, yeah, Dak Prescott, I don't care. Uh, you know what? Go go take $60 million and go make the Cowboys get rid of C.D. Lamb and Michael Parsons and um, Diggs and, and go lose some more. Okay. Cool. I love it because I hate the Cowboys as it is. Okay. Last last topic of the day, and I'm gonna keep this one quick. Combat corner. Jumping in the combat corner. We will, you know, we have episodes within episodes and so forth. But I'm gonna jump on this really fast. Bare knuckle fighting championship is Friday night at the Hollywood Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Hard Rock Live. Okay. Three title fights. If you have not been watching Bare Knuckle FC, you are missing some. Fun as shit. These dudes, like, they're not, they're, some of them have been in MMA. Some of them have been boxers. I don't know if you saw recently, but Jake Paul and Mike Perry are going to be fighting. Mike Perry replaced Mike Tyson. I still think Jake Paul's going to win because I think he's a better boxer than Mike Perry. But Mike Perry right now is the face of bare knuckle boxing. And I think if, Bare Knuckle, if if Mike Perry fought Jake Paul in bare knuckle boxing, I think he'd take Jake Paul's head off. It's different, though. It's not boxing. It's savagery. And you cannot cheapen savagery by putting in bullshit rules. Right? They are maniacs. And I love every second of it. Because I don't have to know anyone's name to get excited about what the hell I'm watching. Because these guys are dogs. And they will come to fight. But yeah, Mike Perry is fighting Jake Paul on July 20th, I believe it is. That's the fight that's going to be on Netflix. I, I think that's a lot more exciting a fight than the Mike Tyson garbage that wasn't going to happen because I thought Jake Paul would knock him out. I think a lot that this will be a lot more Jake Paul circling him and jabbing, 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 and holding. He's a little bit bigger. They're fighting at cruiserweight. They're not a fighting at heavyweight like he was going to fight Tyson. So they're fighting at cruiserweight. Um, but Mike Perry's in his prime. He's, you can't say that Mike Perry's not in his prime. You can't say that Mike Perry's not tough as shit, you know, uh, but I still think Jake Paul wins the fight. That, what? Are you telling me these people are bare knuckle fighting and they're making money? All these, all these people in the neighborhood I grew up with, I had a couple bare knuckle fights, Rudy, and I, I should be making money too. I, I beat this dude ass in the third grade. I bare knuckled his ass to damn submission in damn third grade. Fourth grade too, I beat his ass again. Fifth grade, he tried to fight me again. Guess what? Beat his ass again. I should be doing some bare knuckle fighting. I know that shit for sure. I could win a couple fights. In my neighborhood, man, I got you know, about five people that I'd be winning in bare knuckle fighting, man. Man, damn it. Why y'all ain't tell us we're getting paid for this shit, man? Damn. I mean, hey, you know, they're, hey, you're not too old. No, I'm too old. Okay. No, you're not. There's guys that are old. There's guys that are older than you. Yeah. And I can't. All right. All right. all right. Well, that, then that's the problem. You're not. You're not willing to have your face chopped up with cuts. Mm -hmm. it, it will get cut the fuck up. <laughs> and then, it's not a matter of if it gets cut up. It's a matter of when it gets cut up. Because no, it's very, very rare that these guys' faces don't get cut up 
during one of these fights. Mm-hmm. It's very rare. They get cut up. I'm not doing that shit. Yeah. Um, but these guys are crazy. Like for real, for real, they're crazy. And they are tough as tough as fucking as ball, tough as tough as nails, tough. And they might even be tougher than fucking Derek White. Um, you know, yeah, they're they're tougher than Derek White. But the the, the main event is uh, Kai Stewart against Brian El Gallo Duran. Uh, El Gallo is uh, promoted by as managed by our friends over at All In Management, um, Victor Demesman and his law firm Demesman in Dover. But All In Management is the actual sports management company. They just also had their first. Uh, a big, they had their own MMA event last Friday, and unfortunately, I was not able to attend. I did want to go, but I had a conference for work that I had my full time job that I was at up in Palm Beach, so I was un- unable to attend. But it was a fantastic showing for Double Down uh, Fight Championship, um, which they had at the Miami Radisson, uh, Miami. It's down. It's in by the airport where they have all those. I think that's what it's called. But um, or the Miami Double Tree, whatever they call it. But it's on Seventy Second and Millam Dairy Road in Miami. Great event. They have videos all over their all over their Instagram. Um, very proud of those guys. I mean, it, it is so hard to get in that business. It's very expensive, and and it, and it takes time to make money. Like you don't make money on their first go round. You're gonna have to. You're going through, you know, those growing pains, and it's hard because there's lots of those regional promotions, and the fighters, they're fighters. They fight because they want to fight, and um, I want to congratulate them on, on that on that on that card. I know that they're saying they're talking about doing their next card in September, which I will be at. Please do not schedule it Labor Day weekend because that's still actually August. (laughs) But uh, September, I will be there. No question about it. Um, And we will cover that event. So, you know, Bare Knuckle FC, you've got Kai Stewart and Brian Ogayo Duran. Uh, Stewart is 5-0. He's coming off of a big win over Howard H.D. Davis. Howard H.D. is a dog, man. And um, he had a rough going in that fight. He's come back and, and won his next uh, BKFC fight since then. <clears throat> Duran is, is a 6-0. and Duran is tough, man. Don't let that pink ponytail hairstyle fool you. Those tattoos on his face, that is a tough motherfucker. He won his last fight in the Hard Rock uh, with a knockout over a, a guy who was right ahead of him. You know, real, real tough dude. I mean, you're going to see a fight between these two. Uh, don't sleep on Kai Stewart, though. Kai Stewart's really good. People thought Kai Stewart was going to lose to HD, and he did not. He dominated that fight. So I expect it to be a great, great fight. If you ask me to pick, I'd pick El Gallo to come away with the victory. But it, it is this is bare knuckle. Get caught, it lights out. Um, that's the that's the featherweight championship fight. The fight at bantamweight is. Let me see. Keith Richardson at four and zero versus Alberto Blas at four and zero. That is the uh, bantamweight championship fight. Uh, both undefeated fighters. Uh, Blas is out of Cuba. So, you know, being that we're that's we're your people. people. That's my people. So, you know, I mean I am an American though, so but I'm sure this guy Blas lives in Miami. He must live in Miami for Christ's sakes. I mean every Cuba lives in Miami now. <laughs> Let's see, where does he live? His name uh, yeah, he, he, I, I don't know where he lives. He doesn't say where. Um he actually won also in February at in Hollywood in his last fight. So uh gonna be another title fight. And then their third title fight is going to be between Jared Warren at six and two versus Jomi or Homie, J O M I. Homie, I'm guessing it's Homie. Homie, yeah. the, I'm not gonna say Homie the Clown. <laughs> homie uh, Esco Escobosa. Don't get your ass beat. I'm gonna get my ass beat, man, right to the computer. Um, I'm kidding. Around. Nine, he's nine and one. Um, their 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 face off today was hilarious, actually. Like it was clown like it was clown like. I mean, but shit. Uh Escobosa is at a Dominican Republic. Uh Warren's an American. And these guys are fighting at light heavy at, at uh, light heavyweight. Light heavyweight for for um for BKFC is one eighty five. So then there's also let me see, six, twelve. There's twelve total fights in this card, but those those three fights are at the top of the billing, three title fights. I know tickets are still available. Not many. So if you want to go, get on Ticketmaster and go buy your tickets. Because one thing I can tell you is it's different. BKFC is a different type of sport. It is exciting. It's fast. You can't blink. You will. And when I tell you, you blink, it, you turn your head. Oh, shit, I missed it. Like, I, I missed the knockout. It's that fast. You know, I've been to a few of these events. 
They're exciting. Again, who cares about their names? You don't know who their names are, but you will find out if you go. Find out if you watch. And if you can't, if you can't go, check it out on their website. Their their annual fee for their website is like fifty dollars, and you get every fight. It's not like the not like UFC where you got to pay eighty five dollars a fucking card. It's fifty dollars for the whole year, and you get every card. So go check it out. Support BKFC because BKFC is a up and coming organization. Conor McGregor bought into it. He's now a part owner. So you're going to see a lot of wild stuff going on with BKFC um, going forward. You know, even beyond this week, you know, they have a, after this fight, they have a fight card July 12th in California. They have another fight in uh, August 3rd in Sturgis, South Dakota. I wonder if they're having the motorcycle race going on, this motorcycle rally going on at the same time. I don't know when that motorcycle rally is in Sturgis, but that would be pretty crazy if they did. Um, August 10th, they're at the Sky Dome in the United Kingdom. So they're going everywhere. They are having event after event after event. And um, yeah, man, it's some good stuff. How long has Bare Knuckle been around? Just This is this is BKFC number 62. Okay. okay. So they've now, I think it's, it's like five years. Okay. Let me see. Let me see when it's, when it started. 2018, six years. Okay. okay. So... They've done a lot real fast, and, okay. and and now you have – there's a lot more fighters coming over. Mike Perry in bare knuckle is exciting as shit. His fight – his win over, over Tiago Alves a, a couple months or so – a couple months ago in um, Knuckle Mania in, um, in L.A. I mean, dude, dude, he's the perfect guy for bare knuckle fighting. Perfect. He's perfect. Yep. He's crazy. Yep. He's a crazy man who likes to talk. Yep. And, and you can't promote without a person who talks. There's so many of these fighters, you know, it doesn't – I love the UFC. I love MMA. You have, you have, UFC and MMA are synonymous, right? Because people think MMA, they think the UFC, although there's MMA everywhere, and there's different organizations. But UFC fighters, they're, they're, there's a certain level of properness to them. Now, there are those that are like Connor who will say whatever, Colby Covington say whatever, fighters that will run their mouths. And that's fine, and 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 it's cool at times, but there's a certain because it's mixed martial arts. So many of these guys that were, came up in jujitsu and karate. Did you ever do karate as a kid? Did your no. parents ever put you in that? No, I played football from the age of five. So, but people, when you're in karate, like the first thing in karate is like it's respect. It's all respect. It's bow. It's 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 you shake. You're, you're you're not you're not fighting on the offensive. You're fighting to defend yourself. So you're never gonna be the one that's gonna strike first. And that's the thing about MMA is a lot of these guys, especially the Brazilian guys, it's big on respect. So they don't like and those Dagestani dudes like freaking Islam Makachev and Khabib Nurmagomedov and all those guys. And they are respect. Like Dustin Poirier in their in the face off with Islam Makachev before their fight said he called him a motherfucker. We know as Americans what he said. He wasn't calling him a motherfucker like that. Like, literally, like, you fuck your mother. <laughs> but, uh, but in Dagestan, they take that shit literally like, son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not calling your mom a bitch. Like, come on. Yeah, yeah, it's like, just... I'm not calling your mother a bitch. It's a figure of speech, yeah. you know? So, so uh, Makachev got really, really upset, you know? And, 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 and they live on that that code of respect and stuff. So it, it's it is in BKFC. Fuck that man. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. They don't care. Yeah. El Gallo literally knocked the sunglasses off of freaking Ty Stewart's face today to see his because I, I want to see your eyes. Yeah. You know, but it's it's a trip. I, it's going to be exciting. I think it starts at eight o'clock on on Friday. Okay. Um, you know, so check it out. I'll be watching it at the same time that I'm watching Game Six of the Panthers and Edmonton Oilers. Pray to God, please win my cup. Okay. I cannot. I cannot be the the victim of two three zero situations in two years, and then potentially be in that. Like, understand? I'm a Yankees fan. I still suffer from 2004, three zero Red Sox and losing that series. So that's all I picture and all I envision. If I if the Boston Celtics had beat us last year, I couldn't I couldn't handle it. And if the Edmonton Oilers come back and beat us, I won't be able to handle it. I already got to deal with one forever. 
I don't want to deal with another one. I can't do this. Like this is this will make me retire from being a fan of sports. I can't, I, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> so that's all. That's all we got for Combat Corner. And oh yeah, there is. I'm sorry, there is a UFC fight card on Saturday as well. Um, Robert Whitaker's fighting. That was supposed to be the fight with Islam Makachev. Check it out. It's not, it starts at 12 noon. Um, and then I, I think at ABC it starts at three. It doesn't have the excitement of the pop that I was hoping it would have with Makachev. Um, not with Makachev, Kamzat Chemayev. Kamzat Chemayev and Whitaker. It's not going to have that. That is what it is. But I'm waiting for UFC 303 next week in, um, in Vegas. But that's all I got for come from the from combat corner. Okay. And, um, any last words, Nick? I got one thing today. I Go usually don't. I usually don't. But this has to be said. Oh, boy. My black community. Stop it. Stop it. Caitlin Clark did not get big because of Angel Reese. She did not get big because Angel Reese did the John Cena in her face. It, that's, that's, that's not how it happened, man. Caitlin Clark was already big. She was already getting media fame. Now, what that did do was heighten the black versus white narrative that America sports love. They love that when white versus black go against each other and they battle it out in sports. They love it. But her doing that to Caitlin Clark that did not that did not make her bigger. She was already big. It helped. It, uh, no doubt, it did help. But Angel Reese was not the reason she was not bigger at that point either. Now, the reason that Angel Reese even did it in the first place was to get notoriety because she was mad because Caitlin Clark was getting all the fame. So if y'all are talking about that she... That she was she wasn't popular. That's the main reason Angel Reese did it because Caitlin Clark was already getting all the fame, and she felt that her team, her team in um, LSU, deserved it. She was averaging twenty three and fifteen at that point. She felt like she deserved that 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 notoriety, and her teammates deserved that notoriety, and they weren't getting it. Caitlin Clark was doing it, so that's why she did it. So please stop going around and saying that Caitlin Clark wasn't as big and. and, and and Angel Reese is the reason that she got that thing. No, she wasn't. Caitlin Clark was already being nationally televised. Um, she was scoring 30 points a game. People already starting to hear about her and was tuning in. And we were tuning in because of the style of how she played. Even though Angel Reese was getting some notoriety because of how, you know, her points and her rebounds, it was still an ugly game. But also because she's a beautiful woman to a lot of people, it helped her. But bland behind Caitlin Clark. She got it because we enjoyed watching her game because she was just that damn good. So stop it, please. I'm pretty please. I'm tired of hearing it. That's not what happened. Oh, you're in trouble now, man. <laughs> Am I lying? Is that what happened? So they keep... I know. I, I know what happened, but if you say anything to the contrary, it's and I like and I, and I don't have a problem with age I, I don't want y'all to think that I'm a coon. I'm what's my guy's name? What's the big guy name that they don't like? Oh, Whitlock. Uncle, uh, Whitlock. Uh, Whitlock, oh. Whitlock yeah. oh, man, I'm not that it's guy. Not, I just keep it real, real, man. That's not why Caitlin Clark got notoriety. It wasn't because of this move. Oh, she was, I know. Caitlin Clark was doing it, but. She was killing the people in the regular season with them she shots. Wasn't going, she, she wasn't going around chasing people and doing it. Today. And, and, and when she did it, she did it from 50 feet away to Heli Van Lith. Yeah, so. She was with Louisville. Like, she did it from 50 feet away, like, to the other side of the court. So, it wasn't like, I'm three feet from you doing so this shit. Like the, the NCAA took advantage of it, Kate, and, and, and Angel Reese took advantage of the opportunity to go back and do it to her face because she was killing and she was becoming real popular. And she was like, why not me who's averaging 23 and 15, and why not my teammates? And end of the day, that's what happened, guys. Sorry. I'm sorry to break it to y'all. Fighting. Hey, man. Fighting. Fighting. Bear enough with me. No, you're going to call the clown now. Don't worry. Bear you're going to call the clown. Bear. You're going to be called any kind of has it. I'm definitely going to use this clip, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Take it back. Take it back. Take it back. Whatever. Because that's the truth. I mean, it's the truth. People don't like truth. Truth telling is the most painful thing on earth. The truth telling, you know, 
Look, you can admit what it's okay. Look, this is my last word. <laughs> you can admit, and I would have no problem admitting. It. It's the same way Brazilians are, you know, who started jujitsu from Japan. Japan, then they taught it to the Brazilians. Brazilians basically did a different type of jujitsu when UFC, when MMA started and UFC started. It was started by Brazilians, by the Gracie family, and. You're you got guys that know something that have a a, a, a martial art mm -hmm. that no one else really knows how to do, and knows how, and 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 it's all about submission. So you get taken down, you don't know how to stop a takedown, and you're a boxer. And you're like, what the hell do I do down here? And next thing you know, you're being strangled, and you're like, what the fuck? I don't think Brazilians are all that happy that. Tons of Americans now know how to do jujitsu and beat them at their own shit. It probably bugs them a little bit because they feel like they're the ones that brought it. It's their shit. We can be honest. Professional sports, primarily in basketball and football, are played primarily by black athletes. It is a shocker to many people when a white athlete at a skill position is just as good or better than his colleague or contemporaries at that same position who are black, i.e. Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey, I don't think anyone would debate, is the best running back in football. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone would debate it. And if he's not the best, he's number two. And Ooh, you, don't, you don't hear black football players pissed off that Christian McCaffrey is a bad motherfucker. Initially, they're like, wait, this, this white boy plays running back? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that motherfucker can go. And, but you don't hear that. Luka Doncic is arguably a top five player in the NBA. Mm -hmm. The best player in the NBA, by, by, why, by most opinions, Joker. is jo Joker. Which black player is pissed off that Joker is the best player in the league? You don't hear anyone complaining about it or making a thing about it. Because for 17 years, <laughs> hell, you want to be real, since 1990, because there was a five-year stretch where Larry Bird was the best player in basketball, Magic was there for a couple, and then it became Jordan for a decade, and then it became Shaq or Akeem or whoever, okay. and then it became LeBron, Duncan, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry. So now there's a couple of white dudes that are fucking good. Big deal. But for some reason, women have a problem with it. Women have a problem with the fact that this lily white girl is getting more attention than the beloved Asia Wilson. Asia, have you ever seen Asia Wilson's game? Yeah, she's not nice. Aesthetically pleasing. Like she's a great player, <laughs> but she's but the game, but the, her actual game is not aesthetically pleasing to the eye. It is not making you say, "Oh my god, wow, holy shit!" No. None of that stuff. No. Same thing with John Quell Jones. Same thing with Brianna Stewart, who's a white girl. Same thing with Kelsey Plum, who's a white girl. Same thing with Sabrina Ionescu, who's a white girl. Brittany Griner, you, Arika Agumbawale, whatever. Agumbawale. Skylar Diggins, who I love and who you love. Jewel Lloyd, all these different women. None of their games are making you say, holy shit. Yet. The girl gets the pub because her game makes people say, holy, holy shit. shit. The same shit we used to say when Steph Curry started popping shots from the logo. Like, where did he just shoot that ball from? Or did that go in? Or, oh, my God. Or LeBron James being the fastest guy on the court, running through everybody at 6'9", 260. <laughs> That's, oh, my God. You know, you watch, I mean, look. I, I said, the rim. Like when he would dunk the ball as a rookie, his chin was at the rim. Like, like this. Oh my God! And 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 that's what makes people watch sports. And then all of a sudden, his crossover was. Cool. I don't. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to say this, but I'm gonna fucking say it. Oh Lord. When the guys that are playing at LA Fitness 
can beat the best 12 players in the WNBA. Oh, my God. I'm ending it. I'm ending it. They, they won't beat them. No, they. I'm not going that far. They'll lose. What's LA Fitness? <laughs> What's LA Fitness? Nick, you play point guard in college basketball. Are you telling me that you could not defend Caitlin Clark? Yeah, I could, I could defend Caitlin Thank Clark. You. All, all right, then. Are you telling me that the six foot seven guy that's playing at Elton, not Boozer, because Boozer can't run? But no, they sorry, Boozer. They can't, they can't but, him. but the six seven guys, pogo sticks that are at LA Fitness, who, who who's going to guard them? That's they can't. That's a kind of good between, one. Between Camilo Cardoso and Angel Reese, neither can get more than three inches off the ground. Who's going to guard them? Th- these guys, like the professor from, remember, and one, he goes to the parks and murders people. He's 37, 38 years old. And he still does the same moves. They still can't do shit about it as he throws the ball off their face <laughs> in the park. Like, and these guys all think they're ballers. Like, are you sitting here telling me that they can guard the professor? Fuck no. Like, we, like we need to stop this shit. We need to stop this shit. There's nothing, oh my God, about the WNBA. I, I don't know. DJ Nate She she might could guard him. She got some defense. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out. Stop it. Stop. Stop that. Yeah. Non- you're, you're, stop that nonsense. Her entire fucking fame now is predicated on guarding Caitlin Clark. And now she calls out Caitlin Clark for being a racist because people use their name, her name, in racial and 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 misogyny and whatever the fuck else you want to call it. No, dear. She, she they don't. I didn't, I didn't think she said she, she said she attaches the racist people to her name and doesn't say no. Like, she's supposed to now fight the fans that love her and say, you can't say those things because it's mean. Caitlin Clark's not even looking at social media. Do you think Caitlin Clark cares? Caitlin Clark being in her own world. She doesn't care. She wants to play basketball. She's not looking at social media. She doesn't give a fuck. She's like Durant. She's like Durant. She, she probably does. has her, her... Her boyfriend probably looks at more shit on social media about her than she does. Because realistically, Caitlin Clark, if she really wanted to, could take her ball, call Ice Cube, get fifteen million, or call a team in Europe and make ten million a year. Go the fuck over there and say, "Ladies, it's been fun." They don't y'all hate me. Y'all hate me so much. It's been fun. Good luck. And you know what would happen? The ratings would go to fucking hell. Immediately, and all the fake fans that's oh, Disappear. I'm Angel Reese yeah, fan. I'm this. We'll be right back to Oblivion. <laughs> they would not. They would not watch a game. They wouldn't know what to say because there'd be nothing to talk about because the, the because the 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 good guy to the bad guy, the bad guy to the good guy, whatever you want to call it. If one of them is gone, who is the bad guy or the good guy anymore? It's just the guy that no one cared about to begin with. But only cared because one was black, one was white. I, 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 just, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. All like, right. but yeah, I do think that the it, it would be a cold day. I, I, yeah, uh, yeah, man. All right. Yeah, but shit. Yeah, I don't care no more. I, I've given my opinion on this shit so many times, and I'm gonna keep doing it. I, I feel like I have to. I have to defend the honor of Caitlin Clark now. I don't know. We have a section and a and a segment just called the Caitlin. The, I, I, you can't call it Caitlin Corner because I already got Combat Corner, but I don't know the the, the CC effect or or, or or something like that. Give uh, us a name because we're doing this on a weekly. Look, you you you, I, you we joke about it. We're at two hours and fifteen minutes. We spoke for over an hour about this, and the funny thing about all of it is, is that we would not talk about this if people weren't watching it. Yeah, because be it. Nick Nick and I what? don't give two flying fucks about the WNBA prefer not to and don't give two flying fucks about women's college basketball we do not care it is not entertaining for us but we are a sports podcast and people want to hear opinions and yes i do have opinions i'm an opinionated motherfucker (laughs) and i know basketball and i know what i like to see and i know what i don't like to see i don't know what most people like to see because it shows it shows in the viewership it shows in the, it shows in the numbers all right that's that, it that that's fucking it. data that data data's a motherfucker right that, that's, that's so we're out of here if you haven't subscribed yet subscribe now on our youtube channel and follow us at 
uh, face, uh, blah, 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 blah. Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast. X on Come On Now Pod. And again, if you're seeing this video on any other platform, YouTube is Come On Now the Podcast. Jump on. We're close to a thousand. Get us there. Come on now. Thank you for watching Come On Now the Podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel. Thank you.